Yo, hey guys, welcome to Smallmouth Crush Live with co-host Epic Eric. What's <laughs> happening, man? Well, it's been a stressful day, week, month, year. I know. You got those pages in front of you, man. It tells a it tells a chilling story. It's sobering, man. When you wake up and look at the budget, dreams, man. Keep it rolling, bro. <sighs> look at that notebook. Dude. So <laughs> If anyone's ever tried to design, uh oh, what happened? Uh oh, I'm design back. Design things like, yes, I don't know, garages. <laughs> I mean, just <laughs> let's go there, bro. I'm so. This fed is the up New York. This is the New York everything. ranch. Just with toss everything. it in the fireplace. Get to a fire pit. Have a bourbon and a and a stogie, and just keep drawing, bro. <laughs> You, get you, the just point? Need a, you just need a modular house. Build the house first and then everything else. You just got to store the boat outside for a little bit. I did it for years. It'll be fine, man. All eight boats sit outside in the driveway? Eight boats. Now we're up to eight boats. What, what happened to two? The duck boat and the bass boat. Well, you need a big water duck boat. You need a small water duck boat. You need a mud boat. You need two kayaks. You need a... Holy moly, man. You need one of them air boats, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized I need to make about four hundred thousand dollars more a year somehow. <laughs> so that's where we're at today. I need to find a secondary income, Brodus. <sighs> let's let's think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Man. I got some ideas. I got some ideas. What could help, guys? If you do head on over to the real shot, you'll notice that we have a little different deal going on. I used to do Smallmouth Crush fifteen and. For some reason, uh, that hasn't been working at with that well for the company. So what we're trying to do is to create interest. I know you guys have been huge supporters of the Real Shot. If you use the code, what's this week's code? This month's code. So I get a new code every month. Small month code? crush April ten twenty two at checkout. I know it's real easy. Head on over there, buy all your stuff. Use that code. I have no idea. So Can you I type that in the comments? Dude, I've been, I've been just, it's, that's been killing me. You uh, mean you don't know the code? You really don't know the code? I do. It's right there. Okay, got it. Good. Small mouth crush, April 10 dash. They want me to direct you to some type of link. So here I put some Rapala rip and wraps that I found interesting uh, before the show because they're custom painted. They look cool. I use a rip and wrap, especially this time of year. A little jigging off the bottom. Never hurt anybody. Uh, head on over there. Give those guys a, uh, Put in that stupid code they gave me for April, and we'll see what happens. You could tell I'm a little upset about this new program. I could tell. Okay. <laughs> oh, my god. Oh, my gosh, Anyways, man. I just need to chill. Uh, big news tonight. We got JP for a little bit, and then we have, in my opinion, I mean, I don't know a lot of stellar A-rig guys that, like, live and die by it that probably throw I it more than anyone, but – if Can't I had to say guess, I do either. Our our guest tonight, Larry's probably is is going to give us a good lesson on how to step up our Alabama Ray game. So I'm really excited. He was on the podcast, uh, Smallmouth Crush season one, yeah, uh, right. last year. And actually, in the link in the description here, we actually have that up. If you guys uh, want to take a look at that after this live. I had some really good notes here and some th stuff ready to go. So I was trying to stay on track today. 
Eric. Thanks. How about you, you man? Would. I even have I've been venting. I've been I've been a little tense tonight. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm I'm doing good. I, I think I'm gonna make a few people happy that have been bugging me since I since I gave away on a uh on a on a little secret deal uh to, to a regular customer of the bass lab who probably bought more things for me than anybody. Uh Ray Concepcion, man. I gave him three of my everlasting drop shotters, the last three I had in house. I sent the other ones to Brian Cole at Brian Custom Tackle. And I sent my last three prototypes to him. And he's made me some, and they're up on the Bass Lab tonight. So for people tuning in, if you're looking for that drop shotter, that everlasting, I call it the everlasting drop shotter because oh. uh, it's four layers of marabou. And this guy ties cleaner than anybody. He took my prototype and he took it to the next level. There's a little bit of crystal flash if you could see it. And then that tail, I used that tail and, and I could soak it in scent. But this thing is, there's nothing like marabou. And this tail is indestructible. So the action on it is absolutely sick. There's different colors. There's some black and chartreuse. I've got, you know, black and red up there. I've got a white. Um, but they're all listed on the Bass Lab in very limited quantities. So if you're interested, um, go over there, roll over there and do it. And I might, might do a giveaway tonight um, for anybody who purchases anything from the Bass Lab. A little pack of some other custom colors i've got a I'd, few in there that might be interesting so we'll I'd, see how I'd that love, goes i'd love to get my hands on some of those i i have some that he tied for us to try oh, you know perfect. you can't go wrong with the straight black of course That's but right. uh, there's there some cool colors and uh they will be in the game with me and you so i think it's going to be a devastating bed bait man but brian cole thank you very much from brian's custom tackle he's outstanding the dude as a um a waiting list, I think, for stuff that's custom. Um, but he's got some nice, nice gear. So thank you, Brian. Perfect. There you go. Right on. All man. right, we're we're running a little behind. Let's bring on our next guest. Quick uh quick little check-in with JP and uh I guess Gino again. Does he like live in your basement, bro? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Gino is in the house again. Come on, get him in frame. There we go. <laughs> we don't call him Gino anymore. I've named him the operator. You guys That's better right. get a good look at these two faces right here because come July 24th, you're going to see these two on stage. Bang! 30 pounds on five. You guys better be ready. That's right. Hey, listen, we've actually upped our game a little bit, guys. Uh, if you, well, you'll notice Alex is uh, is not here tonight. He's on paid time off. And so uh, he had <laughs> a few things going on. But he's working in the background on the website. We're going to get a link permanent, uh, well, T temporary but our permanent link up there until the tournament if you guys want to sign up we're going to have the waiver forms as well as a sign up sheet right on my website if you go on my facebook i did post a link to the sign up sheet already so if you guys are trying to get your hands on that and uh, we can send them in do you get do you get some in the mail yet jp i got some people that sent me forms uh pictures of forms filled out with put in the post office so i'm just waiting for them to show up at the house got a lot of positive feedback since we started pushing it man i mean I'm really thinking we're going to be pushing that 100 boat limit. I'm thinking anywhere between 75 to 85 boats we're going to end up with. I was a little proactive today. I started calling around to some boat companies because I know they do some cash uh, payouts uh, for certain companies. So, of course, I started with Camus today. I uh, got a phone call in. So I'm trying to see if they can maybe. I don't know how it all works. Um, if they could, if we could try to get on like the Camus cash or a Nitro Rewards and Ranger money and all that. Who knows? I think. I think if this works out, which it looks like it's going to, and uh, especially with the amount of, uh, I guess, anglers that have reached out to me so far, I think we're going to have a pretty good event. You know, we're not keeping any money. We're just keeping the money for the boats and the ice and the, and the plaques. Everything else is, is hundred percent payback. So yes, it's, it's expensive. It's a $500 uh, team event. So two fifty a piece, but if we can get over that 50 boat mark, uh, that's ten thousand dollars to the winner, so it's well worth uh, your time, especially if you're going to be up in that area for the ABA the day before. Stick around one more day and come fish our event. Uh, we're going to try to actually do kind of a meet and greet with all the anglers and everybody the night before uh, over in Cape Vincent or maybe down in Clayton. We'll see what what makes the most sense. And yeah. I think Eric's got his schedule. I think you're my partner, Eric. So you got it. I'm in. I'm in, bro. 
Travis is going to set it up so every 24 hours it posts on his page, guys. So what you guys got to do is you got to share it and tell everybody that's on your friend's page for them to share it. Because if we get 100 boats, we're talking about $50,000, which means we're basically fishing for roughly forty-five dollars to $46,000 after the expenses, guys. This is crazy for a team tournament. Eric, it's everything you ever wanted in a team tournament in the I, Northeast. I, I don't know if you want it, man. I don't know I, if he wants those big waves. He's afraid. Well, yeah, yeah. No, I just it's not my jam, man. Yeah, you well, know, I when... mean it's not my jam. So <laughs> I'm just I, I'm just hoping for a calm day. <laughs> you know, you know I mean? that Camus came with a passenger seatbelt, right, Eric? You're good to go. Hey man, let me tell you something. Here, here's my gripe because none of you guys are co anglers. Gino, you are the yeah. operator, is right? He 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 rides. Yeah. So look, man, here's the deal. So the nitro Travis had. When you grab the handheld to the right of your body, your knuckles hit the fiberglass. And when you hit a wave, it hits your knuckles. And you literally, you, there's nowhere to put your hand to avoid that. A. B, if you want to try to hold on with two hands because it's ass kicking kind of waves and you're going sideways because you can get jammed as a co, right? Because you're not holding on to the steering wheel. The other handheld is too far forward. You can't move the seat far enough forward okay. enough to get a double handhold what the hell man who the hell is designing the ergonomics on these bass boats today for goes it's ridiculous ah, be do it right and then some of the straps that come down they're too short so you're bending over you can't i mean it's unreal whoever i i wish i could take the designer of a bass boat for the co and take him out in three footers and rock the shit out and go do a better job next time. Are you hearing me, Bass Boat Manufacturers? Do it right. Like, sit All right, in the Eric. seat. All right. I, thank you for letting me go off for a minute. Okay. Good Lord, man. Whatever. I'm going to bring a couple. I'm going to bring a couple of tractor supply special ratchet straps, and we'll strap your ass right in in the morning so Travis knows how to strap your ass in for the there ride you go. back. Hey, dude. Hey, dude. Look, man. Look, man. Look, man. Here's the deal. A Bass Boat can F you up. And that's a fact, Jack. There's a lot of dudes walking around with bad backs because of bass boats, because of idiot drivers. Will and at the end of the day, I don't care if the prize is a hundred grand. A bad back ain't worth all the money on the planet because you only got one spine, bro. That's all I'm saying. Uh -oh. What happened? Why am I, big? Travis? I don't you even should know. Should have brought a butt seat like Will did. Yeah, last yeah. year, Will, last year Will brought it up like one of them hot seats for hunting. Yep. Did it work? Uh, ask yeah. Travis. He was with Travis. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't work. Hey guys, don't forget to like and share this, please. Let's uh let's try to uh normally normally Alex is in the background here typing in all these responses and keeping track. But we're gonna do an ex we're I'm gonna do the best job I have ever done uh narrating and following the comments tonight and keep up with everybody's questions. And we actually had a couple epic uh moments already today. Uh some funny ones. I don't know if you guys caught that. MJ, that was a good one. What, what, you see one? that, Eric? I post on the screen. Smell like embezzling smell scandal me. to fund a new garage. I just like that, uh, that picture there. <laughs> he would embezzle for himself. Dude, is that the Macho Man Randy Savage? Yes. It's, it looks like it. It looks like All right. The reason why we wanted to bring JP on real quick, and of course, Gino, is during our VIP back in January, we talked, and we're not going to name names. Uh, let's just kind of – I know a lot of you guys do follow the VIP. If you don't, you can watch – jp's vip from january it's down in the description here uh you can sign up for that and and watch past shows as well but i just want to let you guys know that we decided to move forward with getting the uh we're going to call it jp's secret bait and we're going to be offering that tonight starting tonight we're going to kind of do like a pre-order whoa, um, whoa, whoa what no yeah you you're not starting to pre-order with the general public you're you're taking care of the, the list to the vip yeah. yes Just whoever to be clear yeah yeah yeah. nobody nobody in the general public really knows what's going on unless the vips are listening and i want to share the list real quick of how that'll work can i do that here's the deal guys nobody's going to mention in the comments what the bait is if you want to know what the bait is support the channel pay the 10 bucks and listen to the bombs that i dropped all right because i don't right. want that stuff getting out to just anybody well time out i don't think you can go back and watch that is that true travis if i signed yes. up today Yes, you can yes, watch. Yes, you can. Okay, gotcha. Okay, there you go. I just and wanted to be clear. I just didn't want to wait until the next VIP, which is uh, what? May 2nd? Or I'm sorry, April 25th is the next VIP. I 
I don't know. We'll figure it out. Here's what happened. We had the live show, right? We talked about what I had worked out with the with the company in mind. We talked about the price of what it was going to be. We can talk about that now to everybody that watched the video. Well, you guys can go to the description. If you guys are interested, go to the description in this YouTube uh, live stream, and you'll see the process to, to grab those baits. Fair enough? Fair enough. And you guys can order. And we will be talking about this on the next VIP. It's just April 25th. Yeah, didn't they already give Alex the quantities the last in the VIP show? Yes, but now they got to now they got to pull out their credit card and and submit a payment so we can try to send some are there funds. Details about that tonight in the description. Oh, of that VIP show, you put those in. No, right here in this show's description. I'm really okay. confused, man. So you're gonna have Eric. a bunch of new people ordering. All no, I'm saying gonna... is, if you don't take care of the people that were we on the VIP to. stream, believe me, you're... we're not going to okay. sell. We're just listen, checking. We have a lot. Just checking. We're spending seven grand of our own money to take care of everybody. That's a I'm lot of. Checking. That's a lot of baits we got to move. So, Eric, fully, and Alex has understood. the list of the people. The people yes. that know what they're paying and how much they're paying are watching because if you. Pay once a month to watch. You're watching every free episode, right? You and knew those who you, people are right. taken care of first. I'm okay. confused too. Maybe it was better not. Well, to even bring I, I don't know why. Story. Why did you do this, man? I'm somebody save us. Know. Who's gonna save us? I'm trying, but it's not right. working. <laughs> Just do it on the 21st, then. All right, that's what we'll do. So fair enough. All right, let's do this. Hold on a second, Travis. Cut it to a commercial here. I'm going to cut a good commercial right now for the 25th. Put me on the center screen. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Smallmouth Crush VIP once a month, $10 a month. We bring on um, select top quality anglers that are going to drop really good tips and techniques. I was the first person to go to the, to the uh, VIP off of um, the Patreon when we made the switch over to the VIP. I dropped some real good hints. Got the baits coming your way. April 25th, tune in because that's going to be where the pre-order starts for the JP Secret. Get on there, VIP, Smallmouth Crush. Can't wait to see you guys. All right, good job, JP. All right. Nice. I think we just messed this whole thing up tonight. I wish we could do a whole redo, but I think we're going to be excited with our next guest coming up. <laughs> JP, we're going to let you go. Gino. Later. Keep hanging out in his basement, bro. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> He's got nothing. <laughs> and just like that, they're gone. I think this might have been the worst start of any live I've ever had in my life. I'm not really sure what happened. I I, I'm so unclear. <laughs> like, Everybody's you know who, confused. You, you know who you are if you watch the stream and you're watching now. You know if you watch the VIP stream, you're going to get your numbers first before Travis fills any new orders, right? I ain't filling no orders except VIP people. Exactly. But what about the people you just invited to sign up and watch and order? What if you oversell? We're not going to oversell. Trust me. Uh, okay. But uh, okay. A, a semi truck's going to back up to my uh, garage here <laughs> and unload all these damn baits. OK, I'm a little nervous about it, actually. And guess what? Guess who's putting it on their credit card? You think JP would offer? No, no. That's on me, he says. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. Oh, man. Anyway. Hey, let's the, move on, guys. It's about the struggle, that time. This, yeah, let's. Larry will save the show with the Alabama. Can we call him the Alabama kid? I Come don't on, know. Man. Larry, welcome. Welcome, man. Uh, nice. Sorry about that little blunder we got ourselves yeah, into that, earlier. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> was listening. What was, I was trying to tr figure out what was going on there. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it can get pretty confusing. VIP room. I Yeah. Well, I yeah. thought what you see in here stays in the VIP room, man. Well, listen, listen, Larry, we wanted to have you back. On, we wanted to have you on a live show because, of course, uh, you were part of the Smallmouth Crush podcast season one. We talked with some of the top, really 52 top smallmouth anglers across the country, and you had some great information. I know a lot of people, I got a lot of response from that as far as just comments and questions and people wanting more. 
And so I know we have uh, a lot of smallmouth anglers watching tonight. A lot of uh, a lot of anglers up here in the Northeast, but really we have a, a pretty wide range of of audience all over the country. So a lot of these techniques that you're talking about with an A rig, guys can apply that to their fisheries down south, the Tennessee River, all over the place. Really, when it comes to uh, just how to properly fish these things, I mean, as simple of a technique it is, or appears to be, there's a lot of detail. And guys like you that really have it dialed in have put the time in to really understand how that works because there's so many different applications where you can throw an A-rig. It's not a one-dimensional bait. And a lot of times I think anglers are missing out on opportunities because they either don't think about it, maybe they put away after a certain period of time, or maybe they really just haven't given it the, uh, I guess, the time that, that that technique deserves. Does that make sense? Yeah, because it's 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 very physical throwing it all day long, especially if you're throwing it for you know an hour, you're hauling this thing around three ounce lure, throwing it around is exhausting. You know, you ain't catching anything and you know how, how that goes. You pick up a new lure, you throw it ten times, nothing bites it, you put it down. Yeah, I'm going back to my go to baits, you know. It's yeah, you know, people that go jig fishing, they'll go punch in and throw a jig. What are they going for? Five bites. That's right. But they're gonna be the big bites. You know, so if you could put the commitment into throwing an Alabama rig, you know, you're not going to catch three, four fish every time you throw it out there. I mean, there's times I'll go and I'll catch maybe eight fish all day. Wow. They're, they're the eight, they're the right ones. <laughs> you know? That's incredible, man. Yeah, I felt the burn of punching a mat before, man. I felt the burn of throwing the A-rig. Um, I'll, I'll tell a quick A-rig story. One of my first introductions, Smith Mountain Lake. I don't mind saying it. We were practicing. The fish were on the A-rig pretty damn good. Next day, condition changed. Couldn't figure out how to do it. I'm a new A-rigger. Scooter, my buddy's cranking, and he, like, looks at me. And we had a small limit. And he goes, everybody on this lake's catching damn good ones. And he goes, I got him. Get the net. He puts, like, a three and a half in the boat, right? So we upgrade there. Literally, he complained and got a bite. And then two seconds, I'm like, well, you get the freaking crank and catch good ones. I got to throw this damn ball and chain. And I cast <laughs> it out, and I make three cranks, man. And I go, I got him. We both complained and I upgraded with like a three and a half pound or two. So mm. funny story, man. But yeah, it's a commitment to throw a big bait that weighs a lot, whether you're punching big glide bait, but they're the right bites when you get them. And it's, it's all in your gear too. You know, you don't want to get a heavy flipping stick, you know, like, well, I need this big beefy rod to whip it out there so I can bring in four, you know, five pound small mouth at once. Yeah. You know, yeah. interesting. I mean, you got to get a rod that can handle it's got you got to have some good tip to it you know i use an imx pro loomis rod Ooh, seven foot seven and you know people are like oh you, they just hit it you don't need to feel there's so many times i throw it out there and as i'm reeling i pop it i'll, I'll feel largemouth hit it and they hit it they just like slap at it just bump it you know they're, they're not really aggressive they're just like interesting oh okay yeah maybe i want it i don't you know and you're like oh large you just hit it throw it back out there Reel, I kind of think where you're at, you know, flare that reel or, or pop it. So those baits kick out, boom, you catch that fish, large mouth, you know, as opposed to a small mouth hits it and wants to rip the rod out of your hand. That's crazy. You know, so it's, you know, it helps with the fatigue of throwing it all, all day long. And that, that rod I found is the best. I mean, you pick it up, people are like, you're throwing any other guy on this, this rod and they're, it's weighted for two to six ounces, mm. but it's like, I mean, it's, it's not a tree trunk at all. I mean, it's a, it's, it's perfect for it's seven, seven. And it's perfect for the A rig, you know? And, and what's the, what's the number on that? Because I, I know, I know that they, 915 they have... UBR. Okay. Thank you. Thank and, you. 915 you know, UBR. Like anything else. Good luck trying to find them. Yeah. Right. I know. I know a, a few, a buddy of mine bought a couple off of land, big fish. They had a few, but like anything else, it's hard to get these, you know? Mm -hmm. Plus mm -hmm. I, I pair it with a, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of good reels out there, but I, the Abu Garcia, the Revo, the beast, mm. I mean, it's got oversized, comes with oversized handles, you know, holds a ton of line, which I throw 20 pound floral carbon, unless I want to get, maybe sometimes I'm going to get a little deeper. I might drop down to 17, but Interesting. You know, go any lower than that. You know, and I'm snapping, no, snapping the lure off when you're casting it, <laughs> but it's got oversized handles. I mean, it, it, it can, it can hold like 180 yards of 20 pound line. Wow. 
it right out of the box it casts far but it, i can no, change in the bearings which i do that too which is that's, oh, a, okay. nightmare. that's a nightmare interesting and and no no braid for you on, on no because I, I know I, that's I, a big debate so yeah. why fluoro well, here's here, braid? I, when i first started doing this i i'll well i'm just gonna put you know 30 pound braid or 65 pound braid on it i'll set sure. it up and they're coming in right there's no stretch so yeah. you're tearing a hole in that fish mm. so now you rip a hole in them once he jumps he's gone mm. he starts shaking around you know, unless you got some hooks inside of them, but even that tears a hole in them with braid. So I found you go, you, I religiously use 20 or 17 pound fluorocarbon sunline, and you, 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 there's a little bit of stretch in there. And you will not, you know, you're not tearing holes in them. You know, yeah. you got to pair it with, you know, like um, uh, from Brown Dog Tackle, the Dog Warden, you know, they have nice stout hooks. You know, you can't, you can't go, some of them that have, little flex and stuff like that. I had a guy make me some hooks and he's like, Oh, I said, I'll, I'll send you try these, you know? And I'm like, man, these don't look like they're going to be able to handle a small mouth. I catch. He's like, no, they're, they're fine <laughs> for what I catch. I'm like, nah. So I tried it and you know, I was losing fish. Their hooks were bending. I'm like, no, nah, we got to come up with something. And then, you know, Ian came up with a, you know, the dog warden bait, uh, the um, jig head. And I mean, you can't, I mean, you, I can't bend this hook for nothing, but it's That's skinny awesome. and it's sharp, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but yeah, back to the braid, you know, I'm not sure, you know, I've heard braid causes noise in the water, especially if you're fishing mm. shallow as Very you're reeling it in. So I, I just stick with the fluorocarbon. Which, uh, which sun line? Assassin, shooter, what do you got? Shooter. FC crank? Shooter. shooter. Yeah. Shooter, and, man. I do love the, the shooter. The only thing I've ever had an issue with with um fluorocarbon is it, when you're reeling it in you're reeling it in all of a sudden you see one come right to the boat and you got like 10 foot of line out and you stop that and you flare that reel and he smashes it you can't set you can't jack him like you want to because yeah. you only have 10 foot of line out you snap them every time how about that I've lost some big fish and some rigs doing that mm -hmm. it's hard mm -hmm. to control yourself when he grabs it to turn around and hit him it takes discipline, no doubt. Yeah. So we got the 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 rod, the seven seven. You like a, a larger spool uh, or, or bait caster with a larger spool. I use the what's the Corrado? Is it three hundreds? Are they called? Um, yeah. That's that's the uh, the real choice for me. I also I throw down a rod somewhat similar to you. I started experimenting with the Saint Croix Victory rods uh, last year, and they make some some good ones that are. Uh, designated for that technique and it's got the nice long handle it's one of the things i like about it um being able to, to throw those and get a good distance what are some i guess some some other tricks as far as the setup or we pretty much covered it 20 or 17 pound fluoro uh, i i really want to get the setup and then i think we want to yeah. really dive into time of the year different conditions that you face and then i really want to get into the mechanics of the actual a rig itself yeah, no problem. So I, I use the, it, it don't matter what reel you use, whatever's comfortable for you, but key is casting far. You have to be able to cast that lure far. You know, you, I'll, I'll be, I'll cast maybe 40 feet further than most people that fish on my boat. And especially, I mean, that makes a, that makes a big difference in deeper water that your lure you know, you throw it out there, it goes down, you start, you start reeling it. How long is it in the strike zone? You know, maybe yeah. 20, 30 feet starts coming up. So if you don't, if you're not in that strike zone for a long period of time, you know, you're just wasting your time. So, you know, with, uh, everybody's got the forward safe facing sonar now. And, and, you know, you have your GPS and you have your rock piles. You can sit off there and cast that fish has no idea you're even near them. And, you know, you can haul that thing, you know, 80 90 feet way out there sure. as soon as it hits that water you know reel up your slack pop that rod pop that rod as hard as you can to get them blades turning and the baits mm. standing straight and you might get one or two cranks and boom mm. the fish are just wailing. but key is a long casting reel which i mean i have i have albergacios my one i can cast a mile right out of the box i've got three other ones i have to change the bearings on 
Wow. What do you go to bearing wise? We uh, had a polka ceramic okay. bearings. Sure. But I mean, my, my wife can contest to that. It's not fun. Especially when you take it apart and you open it up and then the stuff just goes flying everywhere. <laughs> and then you're like, well, Travis had that experience. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's like two days later, you're putting it back together, but it makes a big difference in your casting. I mean, those, those ceramic bearings, you, no bird's nest. And you can mm. haul that thing a mile, especially when you're fishing into the wind. Right. That, that's a big thing, you know, and, and I, oh, yeah. I, you know, I like to cast into the wind, you know, sometimes it's, you have to, you know, but you know, it's, it's nice if you can just drift down the lake and haul it with the wind, but it's never usually works that good. Sure. Again, a, bu a bunch of comments of, as far as gear ratio. Gear ratio. Sure. And I want to understand why you're casting into the wind. I mean, for me, current, like if I'm on a tidal river, and the fish is facing into the current. So I want to present the bait, not over his tail to surprise him. I want to, I want that fish's head and my bait coming straight to him like that. Right. So well, that I, mean, if tell I'm me why, you, why are you casting into the wind? I mean, because I could get multiple casts okay. and specific rock piles or something, as mm -hmm. opposed to if I'm drifting with the wind, I can cast it a mile to it, you know. And now you got to start reeling it faster. You're messing with it how fast you're reeling you can control how how fast that bait's coming to you where it's staying as opposed to when you're in the wind i mean very it, neat very it, cool it, it's it's no problem for me because i do it all the time i get people in my boat with me and are like why can't we just throw the other way you know like well, we're <laughs> throw the other way no, I'm fine. <laughs> you know but you all can right. still you know pick a part you can spot lock and you can cast and hit three different areas of a rock right rock. on Okay. You know, as opposed to you get one, you know, especially the wind blows here at 20 miles an hour, that's calm days. So you get one good cast at it. Wow. You know, yep. and then you're reeling it, you know, you pop it, you hope your baits are standing straight out, blades are turning, you know, then you get it all the way in, you're like, oh, things wrapped around the tail, the hooks mm. on, you know, and then you're like, well, I just wasted that and I just blew over what you were fishing. So it's just, you know, more of an opportunity to catch them and surprise them. I get it. As far as uh, gear ratio, then um, I use uh, six to two. I have six to two and seven to three. Okay. You know, I can it. I could pick up one or the other. It doesn't really matter to me how I'm throwing it. Um, I do. The only time I like to use it, the the higher speed one, all the time is like if I go in shallows, like ten foot or less, and I'm moving hmm. big flat, and I'm searching because I mean it's the ultimate search bait. I mean if there's a small mouth on a flat. He's coming in. That's you know, so cool. You can just move into an area and just fan cast it and stay on that troll more high, you know, 20 minutes, you know, like, but well, there ain't no small mouth there because they're, they're just like cats. They're coming in. They're, <laughs> they're following it in. They're showing themselves. <laughs> As my stepson likes to call it, he's, he loves when the black torpedoes come in because you'll see them come darting from Ooh, the side and come in. Wow. Black torpedo. That's right? so crazy. Big stuff. All right, I'm just trying to keep up here with the comments. Um, obviously, I guess let's talk. Every every state's different as far as uh, we just had some questions on on how many hooks and things like that. Right. Um, so, we'll like New York, you know, like like I says, I I'm big with the, the brown dog tackle. A rig is by far the best. I mean, I've caught in, in one A rig, I've caught a hundred fish on it. And That's so crazy. Giant fish, Lake Erie fish. You know, I've caught multiple six pounders, doubles, triples. Um, the wires are thicker. They can handle it. But it, it's like anything else. So you catch a giant fish, you're not boat flipping them in. Or he gets in the net and you take him out of the net and he flops around. You let him flop around 15 times and bend the wires all over the place. Of course, you know, eventually he's going to break. And uh, another big thing with these is any A-rig. Everyone's like, oh, they're a big pain in the ass. You got to... Um, they get caught on everything. So when you hook them on your rod, you're ready to go for the for the tournament or just fishing. People collapse them. So now you're bending the wire down. Mm. Okay, so I'll keep it so they won't get caught on anything. Then you bend them back out. Mm -hmm. So then you go to the next spot, bend them back down. Eventually it's gonna break. You know, any wire I could just wiggle it back and forth, is eventually it's gonna break. Sure. So I mean you just deal with it, you know. And you, trust me, I 
I say a few choice words every time I'm out there and I love throwing it. But as soon as I get somewhere, I go to pick it up and it's got this hook, this rod, this line, you know, and then you know, look at that and scratch <laughs> this, got my pants, you know, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Maybe we'll fish anytime soon. I found a happy medium for me as a co if I'm trying to fish a, a rig and all my rods are in the same place and I have the luxury of spreading them out on the carpet. So I use um, a big swim bait soft wrap. It's literally can cover the whole a rig. I, I throw a fifth element from Shane's baits. I've thrown, you know, the one everybody throws, the Flash Mob Junior, and it covers it and it doesn't bend the wires in. I it's might have to mi micro adjust them, but it's not like collapsing the whole bait. So I have to bend it straight out again. Yeah, as a co angler, it's a nightmare because. It's right, your your rain gear and your paint. Oh yeah, yeah, but that bait wrap yeah. is, is the deal. Um, what's it called? So, I, I I surrender. Yeah, I think that's so what for, it's called. So They're for like huge. you know New York, you got five. You can put mm -hmm. five hooks on there. So you can go up and say like Lake Champlain. The New York side, you can only use three hooks. Yeah. So you have um, one that's got three hooks, and you put hitchhikers on the other two. Um, you can also, then you go over to Vermont side, you can only use two hooks. Really? You know, yeah. so the, it, it, like, um, with, uh, the Brown dog tackle, they make it. So you have two, six inch wires on the bottom and then three, three inches. So I'll go with 2.8 or two, mm. two inch opti sheds. And then, you know, whatever color I want to use. And then I'll use a 3.3s or 3.8s on the bottom. So 99% of the time, they're just going to hit the, bo the bottom too, because they're the ones hanging back. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you're, I've never had issues when I'm just throwing a, a two hook rig, not hooking up. Yeah. And the only issue is I can only catch two. <laughs> right, right. That's my issue. You know? I'd love to catch two fish at one time. I've done it a well, couple of times. On a I'll, just give you a little, I'll give you a little hint. Yeah, I've never caught there. two fish on an A-rig. Only single fish so far. I've caught so. four. That's so crazy. One one what little trick hell? to do it, especially when you cast far away. Okay. You know how you cast? You take a long cast, hits the water. You know, as you let it get down to wherever you, you think the fish are, you jerk that rod as hard as you can, get them blades turning, get them bait standing, and you start reeling and get like two cranks and the fish hits it. Bam. Right? Instantly. Yep. He comes mm -hmm. up. Stop reeling. Let him go back down. Let him go back down because because he ate it like that because there's more fish around. What the hell? Yeah. I've done it in tournaments where my partner's like, my partner, he's like, dude, stop using three pounders to catch other ones because <laughs> you feel it. And then you're like, oh, yeah, there's more on there. Then you, no just it and you have three, you know, two, three of them on. That's ballsy, man. But that, happen, that happens a lot, though, on them long casts. If you get one to hit, like on that first crank. Yeah. And he jumps, you just let him go. Especially when you're fun fishing, what differences make? Oh, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. They don't get off anyways when you're fun fishing. So, so, so real. Larry, do you ever modify? Like, I, I know some guys will take the time to cut the little snap swivels off, put a split ring on, then the head on the split ring. So they, See, they don't trust the, the snaps that come stock. Do you well, do that's that? Why, or no? That's why I get what I get. I use brown dog tackle. All right. It has right the best stuff. You can get. You ain't okay. breaking these snaps. Yep. You're not break. Uh, you know the the uh, swivels are, are are unbelievable. You you have zero issues. Like you know, you all spend okay. Well, they're you know, a lot of a rigs cost a lot of money. Well, I'm gonna spend. Right. Oh, this one's only twenty bucks. I'll buy that. But then I'm gonna go buy split rings. I'm sure. gonna buy my own snaps, and then you spend how many hours you know messing Modifying. around, changing sure. it. You know, pain in the ass. I, I'd rather right. just if have you one get, good. If you get, one that uses quality stuff, it's going to cost you a little more, but it's ready to go out of the package. You're not modifying nothing. Nice. Nice. That's, that's good. Do you, do you do, do you take the time? I don't know. Some like chain baits has a swivel on the front and yep. I find that helps them with line twists. You got yep. the swivel on the front. Yeah, they come with a swivel on the front. Oh, God, that's outstanding. Wow. Yeah. Built in. yeah. So yep. it's, I mean, we, me and Ian been using these, doing this for, since it, the, it started from Gunnersville, the uh, Costa Series yeah. Championship. You know, a buddy of mine went down there. He finished second. You know, wow. he called me. He's like, "Dude, I'm 
I, I'm all around these bass. I can't get them to bite. He's at the meeting and then somebody was selling all these. So he went and bought them and he fin finished second. Get the hell out. Won, you know? That's so crazy. So he came back, he brought some bait. He's like, you got to start throwing it. So then I'm like, okay, I got I got some. He, he brought me back a few. We started throwing it. And then it just, you know, after a while, we just learned like anything else. If you just put the time into it, you're yeah. going to master that you know i have four alabama rig rods i mean i'm a i'm a finesse spinner spinning rod guy you know i have six nrx spinning rods because i love smallmouth finesse fishing my well, man nrx i'm almost i almost cut i'm almost catching up with my alabama rig rods to my <laughs> spinning rods yeah I, I i just got a couple of loomis um IMX Pro, the chatterbait rods, and I'm I'm so impressed with those things. Oh, yeah. They're ridiculously good. Yeah, the NRX it's is that, tough. it's legit. And my my NRX is I'm I'm in love with. I have it one is. conquest that's seven six that I love for light, 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 light finesse swim baits. Yeah, the IMX Pro rod, I mean it's 300 bucks. Yeah. For a Loomis rod, that's not really a lot of money. Mm -mm. It's light, but you know, people are like, well, you don't really need to feel. Yeah, you do. You, the way you, you, you're fishing this, you want to feel, you, I can feel, I can tell if it's a walleye that hit it. I can tell if it's a large mouth, it's a uh, small, mouth. you know, I'm like, Oh, yeah, a couple large mouth hit it, go back there, throw again, boom, large mouth. You know, it's just mm -hmm. Wally Walters. They love the Alabama, rig, especially, <laughs> I mean, I throw a lot of, uh, um, white and, or chartreuse, white and chartreuse. It's called, um, what is it? Uh, black chartreuse back pearl and white, you know, but my thing with throwing the Alabama, I always put a different one in the middle. Interesting. Always. Okay. You know, Just... I'm, I'm mainly throwing five hooks anyways. So okay. even if I'm throwing three hooks, the one in the middle is always different. What's it going to be? Like if you're throwing that chartreuse white with all your, baits. I go to like, I, I mean, I throw chartreuse white is my favorite. And so is Tennessee shad, which okay. is, you know, a lighter color. That electric blue chartreuse, okay. it's called blue or blue truce. Yeah, um, that's going to be I'll, your middle bait. And then I'll go with the bigger one. So if I'm throwing all three threes around the side, I don't know if you can really tell the color on this. Yeah, we can. I, we know it. It's that blue truce. Mm -hmm. Um, it, and they'll point. hit it. I mean, for, for if I'm especially with fishing like Oneida or places that have large mouth, I will catch so many fish in the middle. On this, and they're all then large mouth hit it constantly. So you're gonna put a three eight in the middle with three yep. threes, and, three, okay. and then all three threes all around it. You know, can we can we talk? I'm I'm curious, man. You I, you got my attention on the shallow a rig for for searching flats. Um, I I fish you know mostly ten foot or less when I'm talking because that's my partner. That's where we're fishing, generally speaking. Um, what what size heads would you have on if you're in search mode, ten foot or less? with your a rig what's the ideal setup whether it's a five hook model three hook model dummies or not i i, I throw a quarter <clears throat> on the top three or i'm sorry eighth on the top three and yep. quarter on the bottom two because i want okay. it i don't want it spinning i want it to yep. run true yeah right? you got to make sure your wires are out perfect or it's going to run on an angle and mm -hmm. to me it just doesn't look natural you know yep. and then you're you can also go to you no know, i like to throw number three blades they're a lot smaller but if you want to keep that bait up in the water column, right, you might want one that has 3.5 blades. Interesting. And if you throw a three to a three point, you'll feel the drag it, that as you throw it out there, as you start reeling, you're like, whoa, yeah, this thing's pulling back. You know, you, you can keep that. You know, if you're fishing on top of over grass, you only have sure. a foot zone. <clears throat> yep. Up. Instead of hauling the three and, and just burning as fast as you can, you can throw it real slower. It will stay up higher. Interesting. With the three point five blades. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Never tried that, but it is We've great for for co covering shell. You know, a ton of uh, water. I'd love to see if Larry could get a bite on an A rig either on the Potomac or Upper Bay on a consistent yeah. basis. So, what is the deal with tidal water rivers? We struggle in Alabama on tidal water. I, I've never tried it. I mean, I I've rigged up some finesse A rig, like a crappy size, just to see, like. There's not a lot of bait fish balls, except for in the fall. You don't see it as common. And I don't know if that's the determining factor, but damn, you'd think it would happen. Like, 
But when you I mean, go, what when fast you start, is not going to eat a bait that just like presents itself like that? You'd think they would respond. I mean, I fish tidal water and I've caught them at the Potomac. On it. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah. I, that's, God, that's, that's good it. to know. But I've used, I mean, you can't have a lot of, you can't have real, real dirty water. Okay. Uh, it's a visual thing. Right. It's a visual thing. You know, you start, you go pulling, you know, it could be crystal clear water in practice and you got a rainstorm come through and it's pure mud. Forget about it. And that's fair. Mm -hmm. But I mean, to me, it's like they'll eat a spinner bait, which has two freaking blades and now yeah. presenting, you know, like six blades. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll catch them with no blades. Hmm. Interesting. That or gold blades. Interesting. Not silver. Yeah. You know, hmm. and I, and I, you know, like it says, we also made this, the real small one, the finesse, which has only got three inch arms. Oh. And then I'll put, like it says, an opti shad, which is a two inch bait. Yep. So you have the tiniest b ball of bait coming through the water. Very cool. You know, you have blades on this or you can get without blades, but the opti shad, you know, little two inch swim bait. Hmm. You know, especially in the spring, you know, springtime, you know, sure. early summer when the bait ball, they're tiny, you know, all the fry, yeah. you know, yeah. I'll, I'll haul this thing around really, really tiny swim baits and maybe a two eight in the middle. Interesting. Travis, that could be the answer. I don't think we throw it enough. I on, agree. On, on the Chesapeake. I know it has its time and place. I've seen guys catch them on it. Mm -hmm. Um. It's been rare for me. I've, I've, man. Have you ever caught one on it? I gotta believe I have. No, you would remember the moment, man, because it would be like so cool. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen you pull it out. <laughs> I mean, throwing it, anyway. I, I, I'm pretty sure I have. Very like up true. In, in in the northeast in those canals, I want to say I did catch one once. That'd be cool. Years. I ago. mean, I've caught them. I've caught them with like 2.8 Kitex black, mm. all black around it. If the water's a little darker. Interesting. Especially on the Potomac. Interesting. Black, black, or blue. Yeah. Good color, man. Can't argue. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay, so I have to revisit that. Thank you, Larry. I, you I, are. For that little offshoot on tidal water. I had, I had to ask somebody who's thrown a lot and kept it in their hand. And who has three Avery yeah, rods. As opposed to 50 foot of water, too. Yeah, yeah. Right right on. There's yep. many there. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Let's go deep, man. Go deep. Okay. So, well... If I'm fishing, I go out Lake Erie all the time, and I started doing this a, a few years ago just because I'm like, man, I got to catch these fish deep. I, I can see them suspended down there, you know, and I've tried it, tried it, and, and I just didn't dedicate enough time. So it was, I don't know, four years ago, I was practicing for a tournament, and I went over a giant school fish. Me and my niece caught two on a drop shot. Wouldn't bite, wouldn't bite. Went to found another spot. There's another school of fish. I caught one, she didn't catch any. I'm like, you know, and I just come back from fishing a tournament on Oneida, so I pull out my Alabama rig rod, and she's like, what are you doing with that? I'm like, I'm going to catch some fish down there. So I, you know, haul it out there as far as I can. You know, now I'm in 45 foot of water, so you got to let line out. But you're not dragging it on the bottom. You're not fishing it on the bottom. You know, you're probably 10 foot off the bottom. And I, I still use the uh, eighth and quarter ounce weights it takes a while to get towards the strike zone but you don't want it to come down too fast too heavy you know because mm. it'll just drop right to the bottom and then there goes 50 bucks once it grabs a hold of the rocks <laughs> you know so i haul it out there and you know let a ton of line out i'm drifting a little bit drifting drifting so it's out so i wanted to stay in that strike zone for a long time click the bail jerk that rod as hard as i can and i just start I mean, when I say slow roll, I mean, I'm, I'm reeling it like this. Wow. <clears throat> right. And That's then, crazy. And then I'll either flare the reel like that to get them to kick out or I, I'll, I'll just, you know, five, mm -hmm. six inches of the rod tip, you know, hold it down. And then I, I go, oh, I just had one bump it. My niece is like, nobody, they didn't eat that dumb thing. Mm -hmm. Then I just flare it, set back like this. And then also pull forward, pull back. I got a six and a four. <laughs> so i'm like wow. okay so i went right back over it i says good good to know went down to the other spot where we marked them all they were all there and it was lights out wow so then the next day was my tournament which we unfortunately lost but we had 28 pounds 
but lost. What? That's crazy. But we had big bass of seven. I think it was a seven two nine or something. All in Alabama rig. Unbelievable. In deep, deep water. And I mean, maybe 80 plus fish day. Stupid. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Okay. So this deep water setup, you're really not changing the weight system. No, Is that's, that that's, fa that's fascinating. The only thing I will change, especially when, when the waves pick up, I will go to a 17 pound line. Mm. You want a little thinner line? Um, I might go drop my uh, uh, swim baits to 2.8s. They won't want to come up as much. Mm. Or, or, I mean, sometimes I, I, I go to it, but most often I don't. But if, you, if it's really nasty, no blades. Because that's mm. also helped keeping it up there. And I didn't have forward-facing sonar years back. You know, it just it was the craze now. But, you know. I'm reeling and reeling and you have no idea where your bait is, you know? And then you're like, I think I'm reeling slow. It's down there. It's down there. And next thing I was like, pops out of the water. So that, <laughs> it's on the surface. You're you're wasting your time. You know what I mean? Things out there floating around, you know, you're five, six foot, six foot waves, you know, it's wow. tough. So you let that thing get down there and I'm throwing into the wind, you know, and then as it go, I let it get, you know, fall, all the way down as far as I can get it as, as I'm looking at the fish on the screen. So now if I'm I'm reeling it like as slow as possible because you're drifting, maybe 0.8 or whatever, I'll start reeling it and I'll see fish go by on my graph. Right. So as I drift, I'm drifting over I'm kind of guessing, okay, my my A rig's in the strike zone down there. I always in the back of my mind think, okay, there's a smallmouth following it. I'll flare that reel or I'll pop that. Pop that line, right? So I'll just start reeling again. All of a sudden, I'll jerk it a couple times, pop the bail, let a little bit of line out. Make sure mm. it's still staying there. You don't drift. Line gets tight. Pop it again. Then just start slowly yeah. reeling it. Especially yeah. when you're seeing fish on the, on the screen. Very you're kind of estimating your bait, your A rig is in where them fish are. So you right want to kind of start doing uh, that. And they just, next thing you know, the rod's bent in half. I, I, I want to stress that. I've had that situation back in uh, this past fall. We were out in 35, 40 feet of water. And with forward-facing sonar, you can kind of keep track of your A-rigs now, where they're at. But the problem was, even when I felt, or I look away, and I felt like I was reeling slow, and I was in the zone, and then all of a sudden you catch it on your live scope, and you're like, man, that's <laughs> way higher than I thought, even <laughs> after all that time. You know what I mean? Isn't that crazy? Like yeah, I mean, it, I've tried. I've gone to half ounce weights on the bottom. It, it in rural, real rough water, it'll still come up. It just rises. I mean, it's just the way the current's going so, and the waves are crashing. Okay, so it's on crazy. a five on a five rig deal, you, the the top two are quarter. Is that correct? No, no, no. Eighth. Eighth. Three or eighth. I'm sorry, eighth. All three of them. Top All two in the three. middle. Yep. The the middle one's eighth as well. Right. And then the, the two down the below are quarter. Are quarter. Yeah. I got you. So it kind of, it's the keel weight concept, yep. right? Yes. Yep. And, and like a lot of times if I'm fishing deeper water where you can only use two hooks, right? Or three hooks, I'll still rig it with five hooks. So I have that weight and I yeah. cut the hooks off right at the top of the swim bait. Mm, right. but now I still have that weight. You know, you're wasting, you know hooks by cutting them off but you sure. still have that weight those will be your dummies now yes. you know what i mean yep. yeah do you show sure? where like in my tournament i'm like look see i'm cutting them off you know that's right all right i'm gonna drill you a little bit more on that setup but i want to i want to take everybody out on the water real quick if we could and just kind of watch how larry's actually fishing this bait and give us a little set the stage here how deep what you're what you're trying to focus on here while we watch this well is it, uh, if you, I don't know if people are going to be able to see on my graph. Well, fish, there's fish on the bottom about three feet thick on the bottom of my graph. They had just gone. I just have gone. There's an area I went through. I drove through. I marked a bunch of fish. So now I'm just, I cast it. I'm letting a whole bunch of line out. Wow. How deep are you? About uh, I think 35 feet. Okay. Yeah, man. You're still stripping. Look at that. Oh yeah. Holy. Well, That's it's light, you know, you still, it's, it's heavy, but it's not heavy, you know? Yeah. So now I'll re let it get tight. 
you'll see me jerk that rod. Holy moly, you are loading yeah. that thing up, right. dude. Yeah. That's like so a sweet just, set. Yeah. Rod pointing towards the water and just reeling slow. You are crawling it. You know, now you'll see me, I'll pop it again and let some line out. All right, well, let's a bunch of line out. Oh, wow, you flipped the bed, yeah. okay. Now I'll let it go down again. Pop it. Dang. Just because just you want to keep it in that strike zone. My partner gets, my buddy gets one on a drop shot, he'll lose it. <laughs> and, Look at that. That's seven, seven, so sweet. Yeah. And it just, you know, and they just load up on that thing. It's just incredible. Yeah. But you'll see, I mean, it's really hard to see, but if you're looking at my graph, I can't see it. But if you look, there's fish on the bottom. They're, you know, they're like two, three feet off the bottom. Have you noticed, have you noticed when you're deep water like this too, at times, you may not see all the fish that are hovering on the bottom, but when you start, when you track your A-rig, you'll see them just come up out of nowhere. Yeah. It's, I use it a lot too, especially if I'm out fishing, drop shot and stuff. And it's like Lake Erie sometimes gets calm, like dead calm. You know, I'll have it ready to go because I'm sure Travis, you've had it. You're out in deep water. You're it's sunny out calm and you're drop shot. And all of a sudden you see a fish surface, then another one surface. They're just chasing bait. I'll have that a rig ready to roll just to, to, to cast when one of them comes up. But oh, again, smart. key, I'm casting into the wind, and you got to be far, far away. Interesting. Yeah. So, so Larry, when when um, you saw the fish two, three feet off the bottom, are you presenting the bait above them, like five yeah. foot? Okay. It's probably foot. it's probably ten foot above them. They come okay. up. I mean, the water's so clear, they come up and they sure, just sure, sure. You know, they got to eat it, especially yeah, when yeah. when I'm when I'm popping it. You're yeah. flaring them baits or I'm jerking it real hard like that. Yep. You know, they can't resist. I don't know, Travis, if you have that other video where I let it go to the bottom and I pop it. Yep. I get what a half a crank. Uh, yeah, that was cool. I think you put that on the Instagram today. I mean what's, just like what's wow. what's the deal with uh with all these boaters, man? What's going on here? Are you in a tournament or are you just no no around? just I'm on I'm on the hot spot. So I, I have okay. a uh I I bring a uh crowd with me sometimes right <laughs> i don't mind they ain't doing what i'm doing so just so larry really larry when how like how many how far did you reel the bait before you did that sweep and push depress the button to let line out is that I probably do like 10 15 reels okay you know because i'm in my mind i'm like okay it's, it's starting to come up a little bit you know, the more you do it, the more you just, it's just, you got to feel, you, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, absolutely. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I, get, I get it. Yeah. Cause otherwise, and the thing is, if you, if, if you just cast it out there and reel it in, you're down, like, it's like, okay, if the fish ain't here, now it's coming up. You ain't right. catching it. Right. You know, and you, you know, you, and you could, if you think, well, I'll just whip it out there, drag it on the bottom. Well, there's another one. <laughs> yeah. You're going to yeah. be done. And it goes 50 bucks when you drag it on the bottom. Yeah. I uh I threw a nasty nine into a brush pile, and um we did not get it out. And I'm like, <laughs> that was like seventy five bucks, and I was like, just wanted to throw up. And I'm like, I hate a rigs right yeah, now. People lose them, and they're like, I'm done. I ain't doing this again. I'm not doing this again. <laughs> yeah, that was a- too much money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, no. I I use the flash mob junior and donate that. But I'm not I mean, the big thing too is you know. You got to it took like an swim. hour to rig up. You know what I mean? I'm like nine baits. What yeah. the hell? Glue your swim baits on. Do you? Oh yeah, yeah. Because okay. I mean, you'll get way more. Sure. You know, instead of it, it you know, it you st- especially when you're jerking that rod like that. Right on. It, you know, those baits will start to slip down. You know, so yeah. it just you'll catch a lot more fish that way. Yeah, Kitex are so freaking soft. But they're good. You're damn right they are. They do catch fish. You can't argue with that. Wow, interesting. I mean, I've taken a lot of people, newbies. You know, I, I actually this summer I was out with Warren Sapp. I don't know if you know him. He used to play for the uh, Tampa yeah. Bay. Yeah, and we were out there, and you know, I put an Alabama rig in his hand, and he's like, "Just this is like 
marlin fishing, you know. <laughs> He's hauling it out there. He he caught a bunch of doubles. Oh my god. Oh yeah, he, he had fun. But like here. Now I'm gonna throw this and let it get to the bottom. Or close towards the bottom. I mark fish on there. So just strip my line. Yep. Let it go down. But of course I'm on the telephone. <laughs> And half the time you were casting that last pot of fish, you were watching them on live scope. No, 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 I didn't have it then. Oh, no, this is just you know, in, this in is my the head. way this is the way God intended you to catch a bass. Exactly. That's, what my, that's what my wife said. <laughs> my wife watched the last little bit of Red Crest, and I was telling her what was going on. You got Bobby laying on the shore, just casting a crankbait old school, and you got Jacob Wheeler looking at a bass trying to get him to bite. And my wife was like, well, that's not the way God intended you to catch a bass. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, let's hope Bobby Lane wins. And he did. Yeah. So, so God I, spoke that day. I popped it. Yep. Two, two cranks. Oh, geez. That's a, that's a, that's a seven. Oh, my gosh. And you're on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Don't leave that phone on your chair like that, I dude. I do it all you're the time. Hit that I thing. take off and it comes flying back at me. I'm like, oh, oh I forgot my phone was up there. He's still, uh, hello? <laughs> I got to call you back. I, I got a vest. <laughs> He's looking at his text. <laughs> Are you texting somebody? No, I was trying to get my phone on camera for my the guy I took out. Oh, I got you. I got you. And sweet with that with that big rod like that and that twenty pound line, you bring them in. There's no you're not finessing them or playing them or yeah. You know. But this one was a he was a this was a big fish. Did you realize he was seven when you're fighting him or like? Cause, you know, as soon five, as I set the hook, I knew it was a big one. Like he started, he started dogging. Yeah, like I set the hook into a stump. Oh, you, that's you just, so there's awesome. some the threes they they get they give a little, you know. Mm hmm. I mean, it's, it, it, I think it was 23 inches long. Holy moly, that's crazy. Are you on Erie right now? Yeah. Okay. That's like in November or late October. Do you throw the A rig all year long? Look yeah. at that stud. That's ridiculous. <laughs> all year long, you never put it yeah. down. No. Wow. Nope. All year round. So, so, so we got some big waves here for you, Eric. Oh yeah, no. I'd be standing in the middle, right on the well, right this leaning up against the console. As you console. can see, nobody else is out there. No, no. I would be in the well of Travis's boat. I promise you. This is me teaching my stepson how to throw it. Oh wow. Oh no, man! He lit it up. <laughs> Did you give him the seven seven Loomis? Oh yeah, hell yeah. He's like, come in. I think waves were coming in the boat that day. He's he loves it. I'm like, you want to get, get off? He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you driving a uh, twenty two foot Ranger? Is that the boat? Yeah, the five twenty two D. The beast. Oh, it's made for it. No yeah, other bag like, boats. It's made like Tom out there. Life. That's look at that wave. That's ridiculous. There's another one that's oh. gonna come, comes right in the boat. Look at that. He's like holding on right now. What is? What do I got? Is that a drum? <laughs> oh, he likes catching them too. <laughs> he's. It looks like he's got a tog tog on. <laughs> that's a tog. <laughs> like you're tog fishing. Oh, he he crush he crushes them out there because he's. He can fish slow, you know. He's just barely turning that reel out there. I mean, because I mean, we're moving at a one point two, maybe. So I mean, you, you, I mean, are there days where you don't even have to reel it and feed it live? Uh, no, nah, you still got to reel it. But there's some days it's too rough. You can't even. You can't do you it. You can't do it, sure. Because you know? it just starts coming up too much. Right. I mean, those were there were four or fives there. Man, that's nice. You know, but it's it catches it catches them. You know, and that's at 45 foot of water. That's crazy. Yeah, he's a he's a hammer out there. Mm. They always catch him by surprise too, and I'm always afraid it's gonna jerk him off the boat, like this one here. Right. And I'm coaching him just reel it slow, just just reel it slow. Oh, was that a bite or a yeah. Brief? yeah? Yeah, I missed one. He just popped it. Holy crap! Line out. Mm. 
Damn. You got the line wrapped around the keeper. Oh, no. Yeah. Now you, like, oh, you better come down here. You're going to fall in. <laughs> yeah, step into the well, brother. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I've been the whole time, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're so powerful. Well, especially when you're fighting them in with that wind and stuff. And that's on a, almost now, a seven and a half foot rock. On, on days like this, where it's hard to perhaps track or hunt, you know, on live scope and and catch them drop shot and things like that. Maybe you can't stay on the piece of structure or fish as thorough as you want. Do you find that an A rig's kind of like the best option at times in these types of conditions yeah because it's a good it's a good search bait because so like i'll drive up an area up and down an area and i'll mark fish when it's blowing like that a lot of times they'll just especially in the fall time they'll scatter they'll scatter around a sand flat so i'll get a group area with their and there's some boulder patches and stuff in there so this big wave i think comes right in oh yeah Oh, <laughs> I'm like, Travis, take me the fuck And in. so I'll drive it. I'll, I'll get a, a, a lane that I want to fish. And it's just like fishing a eight foot flat, but you're just in 45 foot of water. Sure. Interesting way to look at it. You know, and people think it's really, really deep. You know, 45 foot's deep. It's deep. Well, I mean, my boat from the back of the motor to the tip of the trolling motor is almost 35 feet. So... It's really not, you know, standing up on end, it's not that deep. If you look at it that way. I agree. That's amazing. All that right. That was really cool to watch, man. That was special right there. I mean, you are snapping that thing. I mean, yeah. that's like that's like snapping a chatterbait out of grass. Like, wah, wah, you know, like. Because really when you got hammering so much line out there. Yeah, it's not so pulling it very away. far. You yeah, gotta I mean. Get them, uh, you you got to get them face to go straight and flare yeah, out. Flare right? out, sure. And then the blades will get turning. Right on. All right, so, so Interesting. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions um, on the blade. Size three most of the time, like when you say most of the time, 80% of the time? 80%. 80%. Pretty much eighth, 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 quarter, quarter, 80%. Yes. Okay. Don't hold back. No, I'm not. Colors, I'm colors, man. What, what is, what would be your go-to colors? And no, you talk about. I want to make if, sure. If, I want to make sure you're telling the truth here. If people, I watched it. You see what he was throwing? He had the people, white. All on. I have to do is go to my Instagram. Every fish I'm holding up's got all chartreuse and white baits all around the outside, and blue truce in the middle, or Tennessee shad and blue truce in the middle. I mean, it's you don't have to. If I go like some fishing Oneida in that, I'll use an opti shad and. You know, say it's a cloudy day, you know, I'll go with chartreuse blades. Mm. So, you know, there's times we were fishing tournament, we were wrecking them just with the silver blades. All of a sudden the clouds came in. Nothing, nothing. You know, like, oh, we'll catch one here. Pull out the all chartreuse blades, chartreuse head, dip the tails of the little two inch opti shads and just go to town. Game on again. Yeah. Very interesting. I, I found for largemouth. Uh, they respond on cloudier days sometimes to a white bladed spitterbait. Yeah, it's a forgotten thing. I don't see people doing it, and I imagine that's the same thing for an A rig. I mean, yeah, I use but, all white with white blades. Or mm -hmm. the other one we got coming out is uh, Mazer's Madness, which is coleslaw. Two white blades. Oh two yeah, two, blades. two yeah. yeah. A white and chartreuse head. You know, yeah. just for those cloudier days. I mean, right. everybody throws a white and chartreuse spinnerbait, like you said, or all white spinnerbait. You yeah. Know? yeah. And people are like, well, it's it's good for nasty days, three foot waves, you know. My worst Alabama rig fishing is when it's Alabama rig weather. Mm -hmm. Windy, crappy, three foot waves, cloudy, sucks. Interesting. 90 degrees, dead calm. A rig. Dumb. Defies logic, right? Well, the, I finished fifth in the Costa on Oneida. And my co-angler I got the first day, he's like, college kid. He's like, I'm going to be a professional fisherman. I'm good at smallmouth. I'm like, that's cool. You know, I go, I got whatever you need to use on here. I'll, I'll, I'll let you use, you know. He's like, oh, no, I, I'm, I'm good. I got, I got the bait. I'm like, that's cool. So we shoot over a spot and all alone. And it's dead calm, gorgeous morning. 
and I just go to town with the rig and I just start <laughs> pounding. There was another boat that was about 300 yards from me and it was just dumb. So he pulls in on top of me and he's my buddy now, you know, he's like, ah, oh, I pre-fished this spot. It's good. I'm like, well, you pre-fished over like 300 yards there where you're stopped, but you know, that's cool, whatever. So he sees me throwing an Alabama rig. So now my coin my ties went on, he's throwing it, but of course he's throwing it with like five, in, you know, uh, yum with five inch swim baits and stuff. And I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, right. that's just like yours. I'm like, no, no, it's not. He's like, it is. I'm like, you said you go to college, right? I go, don't look like mine. No problem. So I just wear them out one after another, doubles, triples. The guy finally leaves. He's like, I'm going to let you have the spot. He goes, <laughs> I'm doing the same thing you are, but I can't catch him. So I'll let you have the spot. I'm like, oh, well, thanks. You know, he leaves. So maybe 80 some fish. That's ridiculous. My co-angler never weighed one in. No way. And you offered him the bait. I, I cut one off one of my rods and says, throw this. That's what He's that's like, exactly what Travis would have done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but I, okay. you know, I try helping help it. You know, I'm not like hold that, up. You know? So like, so there's a so so the um so that chartreuse and white. There's a chartreuse black pearl. Yep. Okay, but then there's one very similar, which would be the chartreuse shad. Yeah, and the that's got a shad, clear, it's got a clear mist belly. That one, which one do you like better? Or they the both, chartreuse they both pearl. Be it's yeah. white and chartreuse, yep, like sure. milky white, not yes. the clear one. The other it's one's got that problem. clear belly, it's yeah. in the cart. Okay, so. So then the uh, <laughs> the middle one is going to be the you call it the chartreuse blue, but electric electric blue, blue right? chartreuse or whatever it's okay. called. Yeah, I got a bunch of them up there. Or Tennessee yeah. shad. Now, why would you yeah. pick Tennessee shad over the chartreuse pearl? Just Water if clarity? it's really really sunny out. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, sometimes it doesn't even matter. I just sure. you know I'll go through an area and I'll throw the because I have so many Alabama rig rods, so I'll just throw the whole chartreuse one or the uh, Tennessee shad one through there, you know, yep. work my way. Then I might come back through it again and I'll just yep. throw something different. Mix it up. Yeah. yeah just that, you know, they're not seeing the same thing again. Right on. Makes sense. Okay. Um, Somebody asked, do you use, um, I know Travis, you got your own questions, but let's go to the audience for one of them. Somebody said, do you use the power paddle blades to slow your drift? Uh, no. Do you have the, okay, gotcha. You don't. I'll just keep no. myself slow with my troll motor. I'll nose okay. into it up over the wave and that and try and, you know, get, keep my bait down as far as I can, especially if, even if I'm drift fishing, dragging a tube. Yeah. That's all. You know, I mean, I catch millions of fish out there on a tube in the sand flats and stuff in 45 foot water. And I don't put drift socks out. I don't, you know, you're using a trolling motor. You're I just use my trolling motor, to slow myself down. What's the ideal? I mean, like if you're looking at your miles per hour on your depth finder, what one a mile per hour? I mean, what what's tolerable? What if, what if you're if you're if, like if you're drifting? Yeah, you're point eight. Okay, point eight to one. So, sit, a lot of times they call it some people. It's it's a sore subject. It's either strolling or you're trolling. Yeah. Say you're yeah. out on Lake Erie. Yep, weights are terrible when it's sunny and dead calm and you have zero wind. The fish mm. don't want to bite. Right. So I'll pick up a tube and I'll throw it. Key is just like with the Alabama rig, the tube, I'll throw it with a three quarter ounce head as far as I can cast behind the boat. Then I'll mm. let it all the way go to the bottom. And then I'll take my trolling motor and drive wherever I want to take it and drag that tube behind the boat. I'll kick my trolling motor, let it go up to a mile an hour. Then I stop. Then I get off the, the gas. Just let it drag. It comes down to 0 0.43. I'll step on it again. Keep that rod low. You're dragging that tube, digging it into the bottom, and you just destroy them. And a lot of a lot of people are like, oh, that's that's illegal for tournaments because you're trolling, and they call it yeah. trolling. But either way. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I'm, I'm looking at like your most of the time your go to sizes. Was it the 3 3 or 3 8? 3 3. 3 3. 02 is 3 3 with the 3 8 in the middle. Gotcha. Okay. And a lot of times it is that electric shad, electric yes. blue chartreuse. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, I mean, sometimes, or you can just throw all Tennessee shad with the white chartreuse in the middle. Mm -hmm. But I, mm -hmm. I, for some reason, I like throwing that electric blue chartreuse for some reason, largemouth like that. I if I'm in an color. area that's got like Oneida or anywhere else mm -hmm. I'm fishing, that's got a lot of largemouth in it. So the Great Lakes, what would be your middle bait? You're out there for smallmouth. I'm I not still talking throw Oneida. That. What's that? I still throw that. You would. Yeah, oh yeah. You just feel like largemouth will zone in a little bit better on that. Yes. That. Okay. Yeah. But it still looks, I just like the different uh, look it gives. You know, right. you got these four bright white and chartreuse things, and then you got this milky blue chartreuse thing in the middle that's kind of, you know, in, in clear water, who knows what they, they're seeing, you know, but they mm -hmm. like it. Okay. As how as how often, it. how often are you not throwing it with blades? On I'd say, I'll not I maybe 10% no of the time I'll throw it with no blades. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. If it's real nasty and violent out there and I want to try and keep it down. Okay. That's the only reason. Gotcha. Yeah. Get it or down. if I'm in, if, if it's, if it's a clout like stained water, if I'm fishing around grass, or something, you know, use black and blue or black, like on a Potomac River out and it gets uh, real cloudy in that, I'll throw it no blades just to try and trigger a bite. Mm -hmm. You know, my go-to is I'm picking up the one with the blades. Okay. So if you're, if you're heading out for a tournament and you, you expect to be thrown an A-rig and you, let's say you got a 15 mile run or whatever the case may be, are you putting your A-rigs in the in the rod locker or are you keeping them on the deck no they're How in the rod locker they are so yeah. they're just going to be a tangled up mess when you get there yep okay i deal with it yeah okay i say a few choice words the whole time i'm trying to get them undone because <laughs> right, right. i'm in a hurry mm -hmm. use that bait wrap man it doesn't bend the wires it just it, and it's huge it just it's a nice velcro little bag i mean there's i mean there's, there, there's times they just don't like you know for they just won't eat the A-rig. I mean, there's mm. times you, you're not going to catch many on it, but you're going to catch some good ones. We we fish a tournament. We practice for three days, me and my partner, Ian. And he had his boat. I had my boat. For three days, we both threw an Alabama rig. Wow. Maybe three fish we caught. That's crazy. So we fished the tournament. We had a largemouth spot. We fished the tournament, and we were catching them on Jack Hammer, Chatterbait stuff. He's like, he was in my boat. He's like, we ain't bringing the Alabama rig. It's going to get all tangled and they're not biting it anyways. He's like, get yours off the deck and put it underneath. And he's going to throw a drop shot. And I'm going to throw a chatterbait. So I'm hauling around the chartreuse and white jackhammer and just loading up these large mouth in this one spot. So I'm like, he's up holding on the troll motor, he's sitting there casting a drop shot. I like open up the rod locker. <laughs> I start sneaking it out. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I go, I'm pulling out the A-rate. Just checking. Then I just went to town. Five, seven, nine, oh, shit. two fours, all largemouth. Okay. Wow. So, do, 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 do. largemouth. What are you doing? Grass edges, a little bit of rock? Anywhere there's rock, you know, it can't be too thick of grass. But if no. it's outside grass edge or any, if you got a big giant hole, that's, you know, I mean, you don't have to be huge, but you got to, Enough that you can bring this thing through there, um, hit, go through the grass, pop it free, you know, jerk it like I do, and go through those that them rock piles of the baits there. Them largies just destroy that thing. Do you ever? So, are you ever burning a uh, a rig? Good no. question. No. Mm. Oh, uh, the only time I rig really, really reel it fast is when I, if I'm in a uh, just searching, just just cruising on a trolling motor in a bay, just hauling it around. <laughs> In that, and I'm, not, shallow. Per, yeah. I'm not still doing like that. You know, I'm still throwing it out there and just, just bringing it in, you know, but the thing is, if you don't throw it out there, you just reel it in. You know what I mean? I throw it out there real, you know, I get three or four, just pop that rod, you know, you know, because in my back of my mind, one's following it, you know, how many times you reel it in and it, you're like, oh, you followed it right to the boat. So if you're yeah. reeling, you're reeling, you're like, oh, you know, maybe one's tracking it in your mind, you're like, you pop it. And you're really going to pop it all of a sudden, boom, one hits it. So if one's tracking it that you don't know and you just keep doing that, your hookups are way better. It doesn't just come and follow you into the boat and then not catch them. 
gotcha. or pick up the net and throw it at him afterwards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, all right, couple scenarios I want you to, to talk to me about. So if you're out there deep water, uh, or let's just say, you know, 15 feet or more, right? 15, 20, 25, 30, whatever mm-hmm. the structure is that you're fishing. Um, let's say you got a couple, you know, isolated boulders, things like that. Now, a guy could argue, you know, I like to go up, look at them on the graph, throw a drop shot, pick them off. Do you see a difference between quality of fish or maybe uh, spooking a school or any similarities or differences? Or or would you still maybe go with a finesse bait on that specific rock? Or are you going to throw an A-rig through there first? I'll throw an A-rig first. I'll stay way off it. You know, I'll have all my rock piles marked, uh, your G- GPS, get towards it, casting at it first because – you will catch the biggest fish that's there, hands down, on the Alabama rig. You know, you whip in a you know, little three-inch drop shot, everybody's eating it. You know what I mean? You know, mm-hmm. Perch is eating it, Whoever's whoever wants to eat it over there. You know, but you got Big Mama sitting around swimming there, and if they see that thing come through, they're like, no, nah, I'm eating that. You know, <laughs> for example, one, one boulder we fished it Wednesday night, or we pull out there, get right – as far as casts as I could cast on, I got three cranks. I got a six four and a six two, the two two at once. That's then so we cool. went in there and there we could see more fish around, and we we're you know flipping a net at them and stuff, and you're catching a lot of three pounders and stuff. But we banged the two big fish right off there. Mm. Okay, so I think you get, you know, in my mind, you know, I mean, I could, you know, people have different thoughts, but it that works for me. I just think I'm going to get the biggest fish on that bait. Do you ever, are, are, are most of the fish that you're targeting, even though it might be 40, 45 feet of water, and of course you are fishing, you know, 10 feet up or whatever the case may be, uh, do you feel that there's, those fish are chasing bait or are you pretty much, are you, are you more open water with these at all? Or is it a little tough to track them, them fish down? Or are you on top of some type of good structure that might just be in deep water and fishing? No, they're chasing bait. They're chasing bait. Cause there are a lot of these big sand flats that we'll, we'll fish on Erie cause there's not that much structure out there in our area. And th- they just roam these sand flats and then just, they just ch- they just follow the bait around. So if you can, you know, you can get them, you know, five foot, 10 foot off the bottom, just chasing bait. Especially if you get a big storm that comes through and that water churns up, then fish will rise. You know, you might have had them all on the bottom. Now they're, you know, you're in 35 foot of water and they might be 20 feet down. Mm-hmm. You know, that water gets churned up and we, I see it all the time. They just move right up. So and that's easy pickings. So, so let's, let's just stick with Great Lakes for a second here. Are you th- going to be targeting fish, uh, you know, pre-spawn with this bait throughout the whole summer and then obviously into the fall? Like, is yep. this? Yeah, like you will do a, a pre-spawn deal with that as well. As soon as soon as I can get out, I'll, I'm going to haul this thing around. <laughs> all year, man. All year yeah. means all year. He never okay. puts it down. If even I can, ice fish get a bite down for, there. I drop yeah. it down there. <laughs> it, it, even when he doesn't get a bite for three days, like three fish in three days, he's pulling it out. <laughs> yeah. No, they uh, <laughs> just yeah, to check. <laughs> so, like, if I'm fish, like a lot of times when I'm covering flats and stuff like that, if I mark a big, huge school. Of smallies, I'll I'll fish through it because I like catching them, but I'll go maybe 15 yards, 20 yards on the outside of them on either side and fish that area where I'm not even marking them because mom don't want to hang out with the kids. You know, <laughs> the bigger fish is not is gonna be off the beaten path, just sitting around like okay, just watch the kids over here. So you Interesting. Can, you can catch bigger fish. I mean, you're going to catch four, four and a half, four, four and a half, four, four and a half off that school. If you move off either side, you know, you want to cover areas because the, the bigger fish are going to be somewhere around there. And if it is, you're going to catch them. That's interesting. Hmm. Tend to be more isolated. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, they don't want to you know, six to six and a half pound smallies. They want to hang out with the fours. You, you know, fishing, Travis, how many times you go to an area and there's a million fish there and you're catching the same size. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. never two, 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 oh, seven. <laughs> hmm. Except for that one time I caught that one that was seven with Travis the first time he had me on Ontario. Might have been an eight. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we were around big fish, though. 
I'm just messing. But that would have been a place to throw an A rig. I have not. You're damn I have, right. I, I, I'm more of a. Uh, in years past, with an A rig, I'm I'm that 15 foot or less type of guy. Uh, that's where I did most of my damage. And the the biggest deal, uh, eye opening experience was last fall up on Lake Michigan and fishing in that 35 to 40. And my buddy Kyle was pretty much every cast with them, and I didn't want to. I literally was like, no, I ain't doing it. Uh, for one, I didn't bring an A-rig rod. He had one. And I was like, I'm good. I'm going to catch him this way, that way. I was doing the Ned rig. I was doing all that. Cr- I was I was a deep jerk bait. I had I had the um, blade bait going. Like, I was trying everything. And he literally was 40 plus fish to zero, right, at one point in the morning. That's crazy. Every cast. If I would have let him get it, to like four and then I was right. tying it on. <laughs> if he missed it, if he missed it, he would still it'd be another bite. You know what I mean? It's one of those days. And That's so nuts, man. I even I even took out like a single swim bait. I'm like, well, I'll, I'll get him on this. No, sure. wasn't happening. And That's so finally so crazy. Listen to I, what you're saying. Yeah. That's nuts. After after around lunchtime, I said, All right. And I he got gave me the front. He had live scope and we went to town on him. So that's it, so it's, crazy. See, now, it's, now it's going to be good for me too with that live scope that I can track that A rig and oh, see exactly yeah, gonna, where you know you're not just damage thinking it. in my mind where it's at. It's crazy because you'll you're going to freak. Out. We called it, you know, ways ten seconds before it happened. We're like, there's one chasing, one chasing, and you like the problem is you almost set the hook too early. When yeah, you no. Know you're going to get a bite. Cause you well, see when you got them tracking it like that, then you'll know when to flare that reel or pop that rod. Yes. That and was the biggest thing with the live scope with it, with a rig and last fall is I knew when and how, when I should try to give that bait a little different action. And every time we did that, that's when they would bite, especially when you just had them track and, yeah. or they would come up off the bottom. Once you do that. And, yeah. See, that's what me, I, I'm just thinking in my head that something they're following it like that, you know? So that's why I was, mm-hmm. I'm always constantly t- popping that and, jerking that rod just hoping one's tracking it and they eat it yep yep Damn. all you need to do is come up here one time when i take you out there you'll be like i'm getting some hay rig rods i know <laughs> listen i'm, I'm ready it's I'm... like three miles an hour what's the ideal wind not too light not too heavy i don't want zero wind what do we no. need yeah i'll just get in my truck man if, if we see a 10 good to 20 at uh, 10 to 20 is fishable Okay, no, I, I'm looking for lower wind, no five footers, no, five to yeah. fifteen. Yeah, yeah I'm good. You'd be in my boat. There's, it's like calm all the time. <laughs> I'm coming. The ship. I'm coming. Yeah, is it that? Ship. Is it that good of a ride? It's it is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, is the dumbest riding boat. That's why I mean, I could get a new Ranger because I'm sponsored by Ranger every year, mm-hmm. and I have my. I had them make me their let. They stopped making it in eighteen. They made me in nineteen, and I still have it. Wow. And anybody I take out in it, they just laugh. That's so right. just dumb. Mm-hmm. I mean, four footers, you're doing 40 miles an hour. That's and crazy. You wet and not even and not slamming. Yeah, but how's your whatever. how's your range though with the fuel and stuff? If you had to make a long run. You I know what I mean I've, there's, there's I've a- gone I've gone from Chippewa Creek, which is in the river by the top of Niagara Falls on the Canadian side. Ran the whole Niagara River into Lake Erie, all the way to past Dunkirk, mm-hmm. and all the way back. I don't yeah. want to take a guess. Think about it, Travis. His boat's staying on top and not working as hard as a as a smaller. Yeah, boat. you're not going. You're doing fifth. You're doing fifteen to twenty miles an hour. Yep. You're yep. sucking and I'm that doing gas. Thirty to forty, just going. Hmm. He's on top of those waves. He's way more fuel efficient, in my opinion. Both not working as hard. No doubt. They, yeah. they used to make an I-class Skeeter that sat up like a gunship. And I remember being on Potomac with Ed Riley, and I'm like, this is a Great Lakes boat. And he goes, yeah, man, the Great Lakes dudes love that. I don't know if you were around when they were making that I-class boat, but it was ridiculous. It was one, It just it sat way high up, and it just handled those three and four. When it gets shitty mm. on the upper bay of Potomac, it's a ball-busting ride because there's a little salt in the water so it's harder but though that boat reminds me of what you're talking about yeah, i've never been wind blowing people. up current on the potomac it's violent it is violent but that i-class boat just he dusted everybody and he didn't get the shit kicked out of him so yeah you don't you don't like you said your spine nothing yeah you, you, 
I mean, I fished with a guy on uh, Champlain. Of course, the whole practice, it was 90 and sunny and zero wind. And then the day of the tournament was, you know, 20 mile an hour winds from the north. We launched out of Plattsburgh, come around that corner. There's four and a half footers. My buddy, he's got a, a, a walleye ranger. He was he was going to the same spot. We were running 21 miles up. So he was boat 145. I was like 197. So he's he take, he's before me. We passed him with seven miles to go. We were blown <laughs> by boats are slamming, and my co-angler was like, this is awesome. I go, yeah, you can just drink your tea, and you don't even spill it. <laughs> He's laughing. We're driving by people. He's like, pinky out, pinky out. Wow. <laughs> He's like, this why is the best boat ever. Why'd they stop making that boat? I think, well, it came out in 2016 and maybe 50, 60 people bought it. They really didn't uh, advertise it much. I mean, you wow. got to give it some time for, and then anybody you take in it, you know, I, I, I sold a couple of mine just by people being like, I'm buying it. I'm buying it. I had a guy from Kentucky He's like, I took him out in five footers last spring. He's like, I'll give you 90 grand for this boat. I'm like, oh, I can't sell it, man. He's like, I'll get rid of my Triton right now. Wow. He's like, this is incredible. Everybody's we're with turned around going back. I'm like, well, we'll see them around four. <laughs> Dang. Hey, Travis, that, uh, that, uh, that eight boats, it's got to at least have one of those D22s in it. You got to find a way to find one. Oh, I've been garage. in. I've been in. No. There. No, you're going to get one when you oh. actually, yeah, right. No, no, yeah, no. You, I'll have you uh, need a you need a real Great Lakes boat. I'm not, gonna get a. So I love I I like I like the walleye boats, right? Uh, Ranger makes them. Camus makes one now. Triton, you know, back in Wisconsin, it was Yarcrafts and all kinds of stuff, and they're great. But I don't I don't enjoy just something. I I, I just I have a hard time bass fishing out of a big deep V walleye boat. Yeah, but see, my uh, boat is not. No, I know that. I know yours isn't <laughs> like that. But I'm talking the 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 big the walleye boats where the deck's real small. And, oh yeah. Uh, you know the the guys that are doing the trolling and, and all that. Uh, you know, an actual walleye boat that you would see in a big walleye tournament. In my just, boat, my it's just my not boat enjoyable. hands down blows the Ranger six twenty one out of the water. Really? Ride, crazy. It's just. The way you're, it's positioned, how how you're sitting in the back, how far back you are, the council's pushed back, and you got such a bigger upper deck. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody that has a walleye boat and runs in mine, like my my one partner Joe Fonzi, he runs his walleye boat. Yep, he gets in my boat. He's like, unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Yeah, but back to the A rig. So, any other yeah. questions? Man, I drilled you on everything I needed to know. I'm ready to go catch a bunch of fish now. <laughs> so, so um, I know a lot of people love the, you know, Flash Mob Junior, right? That's probably if you ask people, like, what's your favorite if Flash Mob, Flash Mob, Flash Mob. Apparently, because those wires are a little bit more limber, you get a lot of that flare action going on. You're imparting the same flare action by that hard snap. Yeah, um, and you get more durability. It sounds like because the wires are thicker, so you're not not necessarily looking for a limper wire that has yeah, more action I, I, than you. Yeah, I think. I mean, that that you know, I think people think in their mind, well, it's the lighter wire I'm reeling, and it's doing this. You know, yeah, I mean, right. So Pulsating, sure. It's not. I mean, this this might be one gauge heavier, sure. two gauge heavier than that. You know, but right. I mean, if you're catching giant smallmouth. You're catching you catching doubles or whatever. I mean, it's right. just you know it won't it won't last long. You're right. No, I mean, I, I broke. I mean, I used to, that's all I used to throw way back when is flash. I, I mean, I, how many fish I set the hook on and they jump up and there goes my fish. I reel it in. I got now I got four arms. Believe <laughs> me, I know I've lost arms just fishing for one day with a flash mob junior. Yeah, you know, and not catching a ton, but um, just breaking. Yeah, know? I mean, so yeah, I just I think spending that money it's not worth it to spend it, you know, buy a cheaper rig, you know, as opposed to getting a better rig that's built with all the best components you can get. And it's built heavier duty, ready to right on, you know, right on. this, this head ain't breaking off where it's cracking and your arms yeah. are coming out. I mean, it's that just, sucks. that head is terrible. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. look, I've, thrown, I've, I own a lot of them and I've had the heads crack on so many and see my buddy's heads crack. That sucks. Cause that you're just done. Mm -hmm. 
it's yeah. done. You know, yeah, you might just cut it off and put a new one on. No, I mean, no, there's no saving it. Um, somebody had just asked if you could review the line and rod again. I mean, 17 yeah. or 20 pound shooter. We got a 77 Loomis GLX. What's the model number again? It's, it's the IMX Pro. Thank you, IMX yeah. Pro. It's the 915 UBR. Yep. And then, like it says, my, for, I mean, it's a really unbelievable strong rod and it's so light. It's like, not you know it's rated like i said for two to six ounces and it's you can use it all day long for 12 hours and it's it's not you know fatiguing setting in by hauling this you know like your surf casting you know um then my reel like it says i use abba garcia the revo beast because it can hold a lot of line 90 percent of the time i go 20 pound floral the only time i step it down to 17 is if i'm fishing deeper and it's really really rough water Right just on. to try and keep that keep it down a little lower yeah yep but it's you know you can't go wrong just hauling around 20 pound line so obviously you love throwing the a-rig it's something that you use quite a bit it's pretty apparent give me a situation where i mean does this happen frequently where you go out to let's just pick a community hole somewhere right big body water in the great lakes and you know there's a lot of drop shot action going on people are catching them you go through there and just smoke them on it at times, I would assume. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, I've gone in. Um, for example, we had a tournament in the fall, and we pull in an area, and I'm drop shot, and I got it under the deck, you know, and everybody now knows I throw it out in the deep water. So I have three boats all around me, and we're catching them on a drop shot. And they're like, oh, my God, Larry's got a drop shot in his hand. I can't be, believe he ain't throwing an Alabama rig, you know? All right. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Ball out of the deck, and I just went to town. It was just dumb. Now they're all sitting down in their boats. They're tying on the rigs, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they caught a few, but it just, it was dumb, you know. But, I mean, I still, like, I'll go to Thousand Islands. I'll throw, I mean, I throw Ned rig. I throw a drop shot. You know, I'll pull into an area, work it. You know, I don't just pull an area and just start hauling this in 50 foot of water and just hope for the best, you know, because, you know, Thousand Islands. You drive around, you're out. I like to fish deeper than most people in the Thousand Islands. So, you know, I'll do from like 27 to 40 foot of water and I'll cruise around my big motor. And, you know, I, I don't know if you, you do it, Travis, you, but you'll go over one fish. It might be suspended. He might be 10 foot off the bottom. I just take that drop shot, haul it behind the boat. Zip. Mm -hmm. They're like, they it's instant. You catch them, you know, and sure. they're six pounders. They're just giants. They're just roaming yeah. around. Never seen a lure before. You know, mm -hmm. it, but I'll fish an area and I'll, I'll catch a bunch with drop shot. Then I'll be like, okay, well, I'll pull out an A rig and now I'll, I'll, I'll start reeling this around, see if I can't trigger a giant. So let me give you a, a, a scenario, a real life example, and just kind of help me piece this together why I could not catch them. So I was on a an area that had a lot of fish. It was off of a, it was a, a there was a flat and it dropped off into 40, 50. And there was gulls all over the place. I knew there was bait. I caught a good one, pretty, really good one uh, on a Ned rig. And he spit up a big, whatever, bait fish, right? Whether it be a uh, smelt or alewife, probably alewife. But I mean, it was just spit it up. I'm like, okay, I'm going to pick up the A rig. This is shortly after your podcast, I believe. And so I was a little motivated more to, to throw one. So I had one ready to go. <laughs> and uh, I almost feel like I was burning it too fast now that I think about it. I definitely wasn't real and slow, but I was casting. I was in about eight casting out into that 30, and I felt like I was able to just kind of keep bringing it up. And I threw it, you know, what I consider a decent amount of time, 15, 20 minutes in that area, but I just could not get any any, any fish to commit. Like so what you, were in couple, shell, you were in the shell thrown out deeper, right? I was, yes. That would have been in the deeper, throwing up shallow, bringing it off that flat, and mm -hmm. kind of guessing where that drop is, and popping that lure, letting some line out. I definitely didn't pop. I definitely yeah. didn't pop. And I think yeah. I was, I almost, looking back now, I, I probably was fishing like I would a, a big one ounce all chartreuse spinner bait. Yeah. And I was burning. You were way, you were way too high. Come. Yeah. I would have been why would they? Why would if they're going to hit a, a, a spinnerbait burning, which they I didn't try it that day, and that's not a place I would normally throw that. 
you, don't you think you would get one to come up there and crush that burn in that too? I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I would have kept it. I would have got it a lot further down to them and okay. I would have slow. It, That's you know, probably really, it. Yeah, it slow. probably would have worked if I was fishing it. Up. But especially if right. I would have started in the deeper water, threw up, reeling it, reeling it and get to that drop, jerk that rod, let them line out as it's falling down. But you know, now it's falling, they're seeing it. Then you jerk it again. And then gotcha. seeing flares like that, they have to hit it. I mean, I do it with a jigging spoon all the time. I'll pull in an area where I mark a ton of bass and they don't bite. Mm -hmm. I'll throw a jigging spoon down there and jerk that thing around as hard as I can. 90% of my catch right here. That's so crazy. Because they just hit it. They don't want to hit it, but out of instinct, they just sl smack it with their mouth closed and then you hook it here. That's so crazy. Hook them underneath the chin. So you get, you're catching them. But then that's what I told you about that hook in the top. Mm. The treble hook in the top eye. Mm -hmm. So it wraps him on his face so he doesn't come up and jump and it rips it out. Yep. Yep. You know, it's just, they're just, it's just a, a reaction bite that's causing them to hit it. Yeah. It's like that fleeing bait fish, right? Yep. They got to, they got to go get it. You got to get that, you got to get them baits to kick out, you know, whether you just, Jerk that, you know, handle real fast like that. Or, you know, I like to twitch the, you know, just jerk the rod. You're not, you know, I give it that real hard one to get it started. Or when I'm going to, right before I let it fall, I'll mm -hmm. do it again real hard just so it goes real fast. So they, they see something, then it goes back down. Okay. So on a long cast, you're letting your, your ripping line out. You feel like you're there. Then you're going to give it the quick, the, the big jerk. Yeah, I, I'll reel up the slack so my it's tight. So when I jerk it, it's not on slack line. Yep. It's okay. tight and I pull it as hard, jerk it as hard as I can. Gotcha. And then there's that slow reel, you know, 10 or 15 times, jerk it, open a bail, like rod's length, furrow, line out, let it go down, jerk it again, then just start reeling it again. And, and one more time on the, um, the jig head because and people have been asking about that. And also eight blade versus four blade. Yep. I just do I just do eight. I'm sorry, four blades. I mean, I've done the eight. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I've used um, a double A rig called the oh, yeah. Boss, where it's got you know it's giant. Four, four. Just it's hard, you know, especially casting that thing in the wind's hard. You know, so mm. it's I just stick with the the five the five rig five wire you know regular a Alabama rig. Mm -hmm. Okay. And people have asked, what's that company where you're getting your jig heads that you've partnered uh, with? Oh, Brown Dog Tackle, the dog yeah. warden. Yep. There it is. Yep. Right there. There's the jig head. Yeah. Two watts. Two watts, real good for the two inch baits and three and four watt for a little bit bigger. Three threes, three eights. I very rarely, you know, I, I was down in uh, uh, Kentucky Lake and then I was using three eights. With like a four three in the middle, but you know I was down there for big largemouth and down there, and that's probably why I got really hooked on this blue chartreuse mm -hmm. is because that's all everybody used down there for largemouth. So now it's in my head that oh I got to use it for largemouth, and you know this is many years ago, so it's just something that stuck with me and it works. Gotcha. They say blue's the last color to disappear in the water column. Well. They eat it. Fact. That's why chartreuse blue. If you think about deep crankers, what's the most iconic color for a deep cranker? Yeah, powder sure. blue chartreuse. Yeah, chartreuse powder blue. Powder blue chartreuse. It's that faded blue chartreuse. I caught a, I don't know, six and change in my first term of the year on a custom painted DT flat TK Stanley painted for me, man. What color was it? Powder blue chartreuse. No, uh, in, in dirty water. Yeah, Ian, he, he from Brown Dog Tackle, he actually just did a special run of uh, uh, Table Rock Shad or Blue Truce. There it is. Uh, a rig. So there were chartreuse blades, all chartreuse, but then the one side had the blue fleck on it and the blue and chartreuse head. There it is. Nice. That's yeah. a now great the, uh, color, man. Holy moly. That's now, good stuff. Now, his A rigs, they have, uh, do, you have a, do you have a specific head color that you like? I use. 80% of the time I throw clear. Interesting. Then, right. Unless it's cloudy and I'm going with the chartreuse, chartreuse and white or chartreuse, then I want a chartreuse head. Um, he makes a small mouth magic one, which is 
really looks good. If I'm gonna, you know, maybe throw smallmouth magics swim base, which I hardly do because mm -hmm. I I throw what I throw. Some but, guys um, love that color, but, yeah. yeah. But they're gonna eat it. But guys love smallmouth magic, and them smallies mm -hmm. will eat it. I mean, I destroyed them on Champlain on smallmouth magic and that L life color, that purple swim bait, purple and white belly L life yeah. color uh, by Kai Tech. You know, mm -hmm. but um, the clear head is my go-to. I mean, everything I got, everything I got. How, how are you? Uh, how are you storing your swim baits? I leave them in the pack. Okay. Yeah, I have everything in a big giant, like plain old big bin, and I got a bunch in the back. Got some in the Kitech shipping box that they sent me right. in my boat. I have them in the plastic thing, but they always stay in here. Okay. And Keep them straight, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well, I, listen, I Kitex are actually one of the swim baits where I, I don't have a problem putting them in a plastic 3700, especially the 2.8s and the smaller ones. They really don't take shape. It's hard to, you know, if, especially if you put them in nice and straight, and you don't pack them too tight. That's one. That's one of the swim baits where I, that and like a has dong don't really have a problem with that. Yeah, the has dongs. I like that nice drop shot bait. But I just keep them in their plastic. I mean, they come okay. packaged already. So why should I take them out and put them in something else? How? <laughs> so uh, I'm just curious. Like a typical uh, year, do you know roughly how many of these you go through? Alabama rigs. The swim yes. Baits? Well, oh, both swim baits. Both are yeah. great questions. Okay, um, I'll probably go through. Maybe 20 A rigs. Okay. 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 I, because I don't break them. So the ones I use in practice, I'll cut them off and then I'll put a new one on for the tournament. Sure. Yep. And just, just, I don't want any issues or anything. But I mean, I've caught, I've used it probably one A rig, four different tournaments. You know, wow. you're, you're changing the hooks and that. So that's all that matters. Um, you can tell if, if, as long as you're even bending your wires, you'll see if there's any creases in them. If they're all smooth and there's no little creases in them, they're not breaking. Um, Kitex, well, I'd say a few hundred. <laughs> Even though I glue them, I, I mean, I go through a lot of them. Um, but it's man. the best one you can get. I mean, like, unless I use that little two. This little Opti Shed for when I go with the uh, the finesse one. And I'm I'm throwing this little guy. You can catch probably 30 fish on this guy. He ain't pulling his tail off, nothing. You That's know, unless awesome. a walleye bites it off. Mm. But all day long, you can throw five of these little suckers, and they they're so durable. So and that's just, amazing. You know, I might just dip his tail chartreuse. So why are you? What, so what? What makes you throw one over the other again? Smaller bait. This small bait. He's a little two inch. Like the Kitech, you got two point eights. He's still bigger than this. Like in the summer, Travis, when the bait gets small or when you got smaller bait fish present, he says he likes Yeah, that. I just, I'll, I'll start out, you know, I'll, I'll have, always have one of them tied on in the summertime. Just if they're, you know, they just might keep, if they're keen on, you know how you're out fishing and all of a sudden you'll see this one tiny little bait fish and that small, he's tracking that little sucker. <laughs> and you can throw anything you want at him. He don't want mm -hmm. nothing. He's following that tiny one, you know, at Oneida's per, Famous for it. He's chasing a little one inch, one inch and a half little bait all over the place. So, you know, you think, well, the 2.8 is pretty good, you know, but it's, you know, it's almost a whole inch bigger than this. Hmm. He's a little guy. What color is that Opti Shad? Do you just always go with the same color Opti No, shad? I got the, the sexy Shad color. Ghost sure. Minnow. Sure. But like I said, if it's a little dirtier or cloudy or something, I'll just dip his tail. Right on. I like the dip tail thing, man. Hmm. Well, one more time on the Loomis model. I thought I saw somebody ask. Now, it's a 915 UBR, the IMX Thank Pro. 915 yep, UBR. UBR. Got yeah. it, guys? Uber. Let's 915. See. Get yeah. your Uber at 915. <laughs> Let's see. Yep. UBR, I guess, umbrella rig. Umbrella oh, it's, it's, oh, they made it for the umbrella rig. Yeah. Made it simple. Yeah. Nice. I think it's a 
I think it's a big swim bait rod because they have a they have another one, but it's like three to eight ounces or something. That's mm-hmm. a big stick. Yeah, you know that one. That one's two to six, right? Two to six ounces. Two fast six. action. Fast. Fast. Quick recovery. Yeah, fast yes. action. It's got yeah. a, it's got a nice soft tip though for when you're setting the hook on I mean, You saw those. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, bent like you know, like right crazy. Now. Yeah, it did. It did. Yep. You know, and with that twenty pound line, you you just hit them as hard as you can. It ain't. I mean, you ain't breaking a rod. You ain't breaking your line. You know, the only time you're going to do that is if you're out in deep water and you're not really paying attention where you're at, and you're dragging that thing on the bottom. A, right. it's probably gonna be stuck on rocks. Or your line's gonna get nicked up and you right set the hook and be very mad. When you do dip the tails, uh, Kent here has a question. Do you dip the tails uh, all of them or just one, just the middle? All of them. Okay. All of them on the little guy. And on but that, I'm only, do, I'm only gonna do that if it's cloudy out. Right. Got it. So, so when you're using the Opti Shad on that finesse rig, you've got all Opti Shad, and then what are you putting in the middle for the bigger bait? Uh, I put a Kai Tech a two point eight, two point eight. So because yeah. it's slightly bigger, yep. and again in a Same in color. a con, in a contrasting color that blue truce. Yeah, blue truce, dudes. It's always in the middle, blue truce or right yeah. or the or the the chartreuse pearl. You can put in, sure. you know, just Something it stands contrasting. out. Always mm-hmm. contrast your, yes. your your target bait, the one that's hanging back. Yeah, right on. And if you're doing a two hook one, it's the bottom two, right? Would they would those be the same color to stand out? Well, yeah, yeah. Back? Because if I'm doing the bottom two, yes, yeah. you, you got a two. So I'll use say three point threes. Yep. On the bottom, and then two yep. eights. I'll use the two chartreuse on the bottom, uh-huh. and then I'll use say three um, Tennessee shads or got just a uh, adult, you know, just a shad color. Right on. Smaller, 2.8. So those two are standing out. It's got the action. It's see, you, yep. They see all the bait, but yep. they're going to hit the them other two. With the hooks. The yeah, they're color. hanging back and yeah. you know, they're like, yeah. And, and they're a little bit brighter. I'm yep. getting that one. Right on. A little bit yep. bigger, a little bit brighter, hanging back. Right on. Smart. Cool. Very cool, man. Travis? Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready. Place your order. I will I be will. Dig- just just bone up on them a little bit because you know I'll be digging around in your boat, man, and I got to have it. I got I got a it. bunch of uh, I there's a couple. I know you got it. You're a Kai Tech guy, man, so I, I know mean, you got, got a lot it. of it. And you got, got them in stock. You got them in stock. I got a few. Yeah, you always got a few. I know I got a few. I'll go to my Kai Tech uh, inventory. I um I've learned a lot tonight. This has been amazing, Larry. Thank you. Yes, well, you're cool. welcome to come out, and then you'll you'll learn a lot more. Oh, I'm booking. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, uh, it's already down. <laughs> yeah, like, That's what I need to heal my woes, it, man. It's a, and it's a guarantee. It's not a, well, you should have been here last week. It was yeah. right, right. My, it, it my new saying, right. yeah, you should have well, been Anybody's going to catch, I, I'm going to catch him. So, yeah. <laughs> I just want to say, guys, before I forget, if, if you're, if the viewers here, we had, we had real good high numbers, almost 300 live viewers tonight. So we thank you for that. We really appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, if you want to hear a little bit more, I have a link down below uh, to the podcast that you were on last year. And you you mentioned uh, A-Rigs quite a bit in that as well. So that'll be a good recap if anyone's interested in taking a look at that. Also, we had uh, another guest that sticks out of my head, uh, Kyle. My buddy Kyle Carpenter from Wisconsin talked A-Rigs on the podcast, but a little bit different. Um, we don't have to get into that today, but... He fishes them extremely shallow, uh, five feet or less, and it's more of a uh, kind of a drag, if you will. Uh, keep that thing on the bottom type of deal that works around specific times of the year on the Great Lakes. And if you want to learn more, go check out that podcast as well. So there's a lot of different ways to fish these and experiment with. And I love hearing everybody's story. Yeah, I mean, it it's, it's to, uh, fishing what works right. best for you. You know what I mean? You right get dialed on. in and you, you, you start to, you know, learn a little more and more. And you're like, well, well, he does it this way, but you know, this really works better for me. You know, I, I like, I'll throw 15 pound line and it's good. Or I'll, I'll throw the little finesse guy around docks. You know what I mean? I'm flipping that thing around docks and it's just whatever works for you. But I mean, I've had a ton of success the way I do it, you know. Have, have you messed around on the Tennessee River and stuff, a Reagan at all? Any oh, yeah. Tips you can give yeah. to some of the guys down south? Is it the same 
Same deal. You just get it Same down. Thing, the the biggest want. thing is the clear water. You can't have that dirty water. You know, you can, you get dirty. I mean, that's, it's, it's really good in it, you know, especially Gunnersville or Kentucky Lake in, you know, December, January. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're catching giant, giant bags. A buddy of mine just fished a tournament, uh, another lake out in um, Kentucky and 20 pound bags usually win 19, 20 pound bags. He had 17 chains and I'm like, you gotta be throwing a rig. Yeah. Nobody throws a rig there. You know, you know, nobody throws a rig. Some 22 year old, 21 year old kid won. He had like 27 pounds on the Alabama rig, <laughs> found some clear water and just lit him up. You know, mm. I'm like, I told you, you should be throwing the Alabama rig. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that real quick. I mean, it's been, this technique's been out for a long time. A lot of anglers have thrown it. A lot of guys like yourself all over the country depend on it quite a bit but it's still very effective you know it just it just i think what it does is it it shows these fish like their instincts right a pot of bait even though to us it might look crazy with metal and everything hanging out i mean they're just reacting to their environment and they see something like that that just triggers a response i think that's why it's still so effective even though there might be a lot of other guys using it. And I think the guy that nowadays that, that really messes with it long-term, learns it, learns the ins and outs, and then applies it to these situations, they're going to excel versus someone that just says, okay, I'm here at a, a you know a bridge a bridge span, and I'm going to pick this thing up and roll it down the, uh, you know, the bridge for a couple casts and then move on. These yeah. guys are just I, dialed you got, in. You have to work the bait. It's, you know, it's not, you know, everyone's like, well, I just haul it out there, reel it in and five, I bring five fish in. They just eat it and then just throw it out there, reel it in. It's the easy right, lure. Right. That's why they banned it. Cause it's just, you throw it out there and it's too easy to catch fish. I fish probably maybe 30 or 40 different people on my boat and they'll drop shot. They'll do whatever. One guy I took out, I had 70 some smallmouth on Lake Erie. He had 22 drop shot. He tried throwing an Alabama or he never caught a fish. You know, it's just. Wow. You have to work the lure. It's not, you can't just throw it out and reel it in. You know, sometimes it works like that when they're just, anybody can catch them and they're just feeding on everything. You just throw it out there and, you know, light a cigarette and they're biting it and stuff. You know, it's, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, but 90% of the time is you got to work that bait and make it trigger the fish to bite. You know, you got to have your isolated yeah. rock piles or whatever you're fishing and cast into them and, you being in that strike zone is the key, especially if you're fishing deep water. You know, you're out 45 foot of water, you're, you're reeling it in in 20 foot. No, well, mm -hmm. you ain't catching in. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. I Ooh. think that's with a lot of baits, you know, chatter baits, spinner baits, crank baits. I mean, if you're wine and reaction bait, you better be doing something that triggers a bite. Yeah. And it could be a very specific times, right? You know, it's not just chunking and wine. Hey, look, when they're really super active, maybe you can catch them that way. But more often than not, I'm doing something immediately on a reaction. Yeah, somebody, yeah so there's a reason why somebody's catching them and the guy throwing the same lure ain't catching them. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. You know, and I, I I really have a hard time that it's, you know, I can catch fish you know, with a spinning rod or with a chatterbait or with sure. saying, you know, any top water, whatever, flipping, I can catch fish. I mean, right. I love catching it on this. It's just, I it's unbelievable technique and for some of the tournaments to say well it's illegal it's just too easy i mean it's just are you kidding me so you i can't throw an alabama rig but you can go out there in 15 foot of water because you got fifty thousand dollars with electronics and then you're going to use some traffic cone flogger to look for bet fish on beds in 15 foot of water so you know how how's that illegal now you got forward facing sonar i mean right but that's well okay. uh, so a lot of you, uh, you make uh, a compelling case I don't. Yes, I. I think it should be legal everywhere. However, I do find it. Uh, I guess it, let's say we show up to Erie in the fall, and I'm going up against you, right? And uh, I mean, if if it was illegal, I'd feel a little bit better about my odds that you know Larry can't throw that big <laughs> a rig around. So I don't. And, I don't and, mind and, it. And, but. and Larry would have felt better if uh, if it was a no forward facing sonar tournament. You had to catch him old school. <laughs> yeah, you, but no, I mean like sonar. Yeah, look, drift, I still have no problem catching him on a drop shot or dragging a tube, you know, or a big mm -hmm. swim big swim bait on the bottom. You know, I mean, there's times where 
I'll just destroy them on a tube and not even throw the rig. You know, I, I like throwing it cause I like throwing it and I hope to catch like a seven or eight pounder on it, you know, when I'm messing around, but there's or a six a, and a four at the same time yeah. and having 10 it, pounds coming in one cast. But in that springtime when they're scattered and you got a little, you know, you got some wind blowing you like, you know, one mile an hour, you can't be dragging a three quarter ounce tube on the bottom in the sand. I mean, just catching giant fish after giant fish, you know, it's funny, but so I, you know, I'm pretty versatile. It just, just a technique that I like to catch them with. What would be your second favorite way to catch them? Good question. Drop shot. Drop shot. Yeah. Yeah. That was music to Travis's ear. Drop shot. Yeah. He loves that drop shot. I'm a, I'm a spinning rod guy. Yeah, man. And I got, Travis. I got six NRXs and six Daiwa Steez reels. So <laughs> I'm serious about my drop shot. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's what I'm talking Jeez. about. Yeah. That's for real right there. That's like having six NRXs and six Stellas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stella. Wow. Oh, good show tonight, guys. Heck Literally yeah. appreciate you coming on. A lot no of good problem. information. This is good stuff. I'll come on anytime you want. Heck yeah. I'm coming out. <laughs> anytime you need, anytime you want. There is nothing like sweep setting on a big fish, man. I'm sorry. That's one of my favorite hook sets. I just like, oh, man, yeah. I mean, nothing like it, man. I Especially with a heavy tackle like that, 20-pound line, big rod. Oh, yeah, yeah. If I'm square billing and, and cover cranking, man, I mean, I caught a, I don't know, a 473 this weekend. That was my first fish of the morning. I sucked the rest of the day. But uh, I was trapping some 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 rock, you know, and worming that rattle trap through, and I popped it over a rock. And she went, boom, and I went. Mm, and man, just manhandled her in. It was on 17 pound shooter. I love that. Another thing shooter. with the swim baits, too, real quick, is yep. I like the Kitex because they're a the streamlined swim bait. You know, you get a lot of the paddle tail swim baits that have that belly. Mm -hmm. I just, I've never had good luck with, you know, those, those mm -hmm. like belly type swim baits and stuff. I just, uh, any of this real streamlined swim, I mean, it, you can't go wrong with a Kitex. I mean, it's just, it's got that sent to it and they they run good yeah i you agree know, i ain't sponsored by kai or nothing but they're just that's the best i've ever found can't argue with mm -hmm. it perfect all right we should make a couple announcements before we wrap up guys next week monday uh jason grimada ontario he's actually been on the uh the podcast as well last year he's going to be coming on talking a little bit about some uh river fishing for smallmouth deep Deep, big water. He fishes the St. Lawrence, but a lot of a lot of areas way east of some of the places that we fish. I know he's going to talk a little bit more about uh, football jigs, deep water football jigs, as well as using underwater cameras. So that's going to be a good, great episode. Uh, on the 18th, that's we got great. Nico Bates uh, stopping by. Uh, Scott's going to give us a, a little rundown of some new plastics that are coming out. And then on April 25th, I'm gearing up for the big VIP members only show. I'm going to give the juice when it comes to, I, I got my list started here. Whoa. Hopefully uh, nobody screenshotted that. <laughs> we're going to talk about how, how I target uh, smallmouth during the spawn. And I know it's a controversial subject, but a lot of times when we're fishing tournaments that are around the spawn, you have to, if you can see them, if other anglers can see the fish, those are the fish that you need to be targeting. So I'm going to go through, all the little tricks that I do when it comes to uh, bed fishing. Of course, this will relate to small, uh, large mouth as well. And again, depending on how you feel about it, you know, that's your decision. I, I love catching a few fish off the beds. I'm not, I'm not going to sit there for weeks on a week and hammer them, but I guarantee if I'm going to go up there opening week and I'm going to grab a few, it's, it's, it's a good time. And I think of it this way. There's a lot of guys there, just anglers in general that are throwing these monsters in the cooler. You know, I might be ripping them off a bed here and there, but, you know, we're letting these fish go. Grow. So, yeah, but I mean, you got to look, look at it this way. I mean, down south, right? Lake Shore, what do you got? 10, 15 hunters, they ain't them off the beds all year round. Which be it. Catching 12 pounders. So it's not hurt. Obviously, That's it's not point. hurting. Yeah. You know, I'll say this is, about that. I you guys, the, the New York fisheries are just world class. There's nothing oh, like yeah. it. There's it's nothing not like it on the planet. World. I mean, yeah. when, when gobies came in, the, the, how fat those fish got, it's just, it's insanity. Yeah. It's insanity. Well, that, that gobie hurt there. Oneida, though. 
Did it really? Why? Yeah. It uh well the fish stay on the bottom that. now. Oh, you mean it fishes differently. Yeah. Like a so like a hurts, blue back hurts, herring, like like blue hurts, back herring. Hurts guys like uh that one that's throwing air rig around all day long, right? Yeah, you just gotta know where they're at. <laughs> but I mean you before you used to whip down Oneida Lake and look and see a bunch of terns diving, you shoot over there and it's lights out. Wow. Well they're not mm-hmm. I think I don't know if it hurt the gizzard shad. There's not as much shad or there's too many walleye in there that are eating the gizzard shad. They used to chase that shad all around. That small eyes would get in them groups and push that shad up. Now they don't need to do that. I think they just right. swim around on the bottom and just eat all the gobies. And they're like, why, why do I got to swim around and chase these stupid shad when I just, you know, 16 inches off the bottom and swim around my mouth open and just eat these dumb gobies? You know, <laughs> I think that changed the fishing there big time. Yeah, same thing with the blueback herrings down at, you know, in the southern fisheries, man. Those largemouth now are just nomadic and they just chase those high protein bluebacks, man. They they have changed their behavior. They're still fish shallow, but for the guys that used to fish there, that used to catch them a certain way, it has completely changed the game. Yeah, completely just gotta, just changed the game. But Travis, I'll give my my Instagram is just Larry yeah. Mazer Fishing. If anybody wants to follow me or want to ask questions or whatever, just hit me up. I'll answer anybody's question or anytime. You know, just shoot me a Absolutely. message, and I have I got no secrets. I'm not. I'm just going out to have a good time, teach right some people on. how to uh, you know do what I do, and you just got to be be better than me at it. That's. I agree. <laughs> Put your time in. Are you going to be at there the are. Uh, are you going to be at the Smallmouth uh, Crush Open I Team just, event uh-oh. on July yeah, 24th? the twenty fourth. Oh, I, I heard. Um, I heard uh, Pelletier was going to be out hole in first place. He said thirty. Well, well, I mean, that's not going to be enough if we have thirty one. Yeah. Uh, first of all, you guys are both going to be off because I'm not saying <laughs> I'm going to win, but it's not going to take thirty. It's probably no, going to be about twenty four no. to twenty six. You know. Yeah. I figured but, the same. Uh, he, you know, uh, I'm up I just there got... for, um, I'm up there because I'm doing a the 27th, 28th, 29th out of Kingston, the Thousand Islands Open. How yeah. are you able to fish that? Can Americans fish that? I didn't even know. Oh, yeah, we got in. Me and Fonzie got in the very first year they had it. Right. And they only allow a hundred in. Yes. So now, if you fished it, you're always in. Yep. Wow. And it's, a, it's an unbelievable tournament. The I money know. they give away and the top, if there's a, only a hundred boats and then the top 30 make it to the final day, everybody gets a key to start a brand new bass cat with a 250 on it. So you weigh in your fish, grab a what? key out of the bucket, turn it. So if you finish 30th place, you got the right key. Well, you just want a brand new bass cat. Holy shit. Yeah. It's a good deal. That's and there's and they're second to none there, the way they, their fish care. They have a their the the college up there. They have fifteen kids coming in, and once you weigh your fish and you bring them, you put them in a tank. They take them out. They fizz every one. They tag them, what? and they make sure they're good. And they put them in a the live release boat and let them go. So they're constantly taking good care. You you have a dead fish penalty one pound. Holy moly! They don't play games there. That's no game right we there. We caught a man. fish. We caught a tagged fish at the Ducks, and the tournament was out of Gananoque. You know how far that is up the river. Right? I don't. It's like 30 enough. miles up the river. Okay. We caught a fish at the Ducks that was tagged in Gananoque three years prior. Holy shit. Mm. So it was let go in Gananoque, and we caught it at the Ducks. That's crazy. He's like, he probably got caught at the ducks, brought in, they tagged him, then he finally made it back there, and then we caught him. (laughs) I just got back home. He's like, I got to make this journey again, 30 (laughs) miles. That's nuts, man. Yeah. Well, no, that's 30 miles just of the river. Then you got another 20 miles to get to the ducks. So he was 50 miles from home, Mm -hmm. and we brought him back. (laughs) Jeez. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Well, that's, uh, well, good luck there, man. I, I thought, I thought we weren't, uh, I thought we weren't able to fish in, in, uh, or drive our cars into Canada yet. I was wrong. I would have looked into that this spring. Cause isn't yeah, it man. like in January or February, you have to register for this. Cause so two, uh, three years ago. So 2019, I was uh, on their website 
and it was some Saturday in February to register. And so it was about 10 o'clock that morning. And I remembered, oh shit, I should call in to sign up for this. So I call and she's like, we're already full. I go, she's like, yeah, we had like th these people sign up at 1201 midnight. I think I day. remember that day. Yes. Yeah. Because like everybody that fish it has first crack at it. So then, so a hundred boats. So maybe like this year, 97 were coming back. Wow. Three. So there's spots. only three spots. Oh, and they all so dialed. They, they, they all sign up at 1201. Yeah. So whoever, whoever, yeah. Three spots left. That's it. Unless you bring a bag of cash to somebody. Yeah. And well, then that, maybe yeah. you get one of that those. That can happen spots. too. Yeah. But money don't, talks. You know, and I, 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 says, I go, why don't you guys do like 130 votes or something in there? Parking's yeah. an issue. Uh, and they just, they think it, it's, it's, it's a better event that way. Yeah. Yeah. No, true, it's a right? world class. I, I've, I've always uh, I've heard about. It. I know guys that that fish it. I mean, it's uh, who. So when is that exactly? Is that the weekend? Twenty eighth and twenty ninth. I'm not going to get in. Uh, yeah, but still, it's right after your derb. Yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, after yours. Wow. Okay. Wow. On Ontario. Yep. Out of Kingston. Oh. Now we don't have to travel thirty miles of river Ooh. to get to the lake. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. I got five five guide trips booked that week. I guess we'll be overlapping. Mm -hmm. Where do you guys run? All over? You'll be all yeah, over the lake? You know, yeah. glue, little glue, ducks. Jeez. Oh, okay. Mm. You know, the usual, milk, out there. usual five to seven foot wave milk run. Right. right. <laughs> it's always blowing out there. Dang. Dang. All right, cool. Well, listen, we'll let you get going. I seriously appreciate you stopping by. A lot of nope. great information. I know. Uh, yeah, man. Larry, this I'm, is I'm great, gonna, man. Thank you. This is good stuff. No and I'm sure Thank we'll, you. Uh, like it says, invites open. That's awesome. We'll be there. I'm coming. I'm coming. I tried to call you last fall, but it was 35 miles an hour every day. So Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, we, we couldn't <laughs> hook up. But Yeah, me and you were supposed to go see him. Yes, I said, well, we're up there. I'm like, it's I said I, I, I said I'd sit in the, in, uh, like at 35. I'm having like chicken wings. Bad. I'm having buffalo chicken, chicken wings. wings on like it. Yeah, I know. I, mean, I heard about so, it. I, so and Larry, you guys Larry's will go fishing. out and tell me all about it. Larry, you're doing most of your damage out of Buffalo, right? Or yeah. that's the zone. So yeah. a west wind on Erie. I mean, it could be good. brutal there. It's well, okay. Ten to fifteen, you got three footers. Right. West, southwest. Ten to twenty, you're gonna have fives. Southwest mm. or west, northwest, you know, mm. you're going to have fives, which is, it ain't bad. I mean, I do, I mean, I, I had to get used to it because every time I would go down, when I first started fishing, every time I go down to the lake, it's three footers, four footers. You, you'll never go fishing. So now it's just like <laughs> three, go four fishing. footers. This is a regular day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, was, I, 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 now I'm always, my, my in-laws live right a condo right overlooking the lake and they'll be like called my wife and they'll be like is him and vincent out fishing today the water's coming over the wall they're like they're like yeah he's out there <laughs> the only one's out there water's coming over the wall and you got to know how to drive in it too plus i got i mean i got the best boat ever but sure. you still need to know how to drive in it and respect that lake right on it'll tear you up say we're ontario right on yeah. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. The only thing it does do is if you if you make a wrong call in the area or zone that you want to fish, yeah. you don't have a lot of options to be like, oh, let's go over here now. You know, yeah, kinda... so you live and die by it. You make a long run. You know, that's mm -hmm. like sometimes I was running down almost towards Barcelona. You make that run, mm -hmm. you're the hero of zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you can't yeah. recover. You're like, oh, I'm going to go over here now. Mm hmm. Very true. All right, Eric, so you got true. anything else? Man, no, this was awesome. Larry, you, you rocked it, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good Anytime. stuff. Awesome. Good stuff. Everybody really enjoyed the stream. Great positive comments coming good. through, man. Very yeah, good. I think yes. we got I think we got to all the questions too, man. Good job, Travis. Good. Like I it tried. Says, anybody get, anybody get I did good tonight. Man. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Heck yeah. I just gave you a follow, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. You got it. All right. Let's all right. uh Wrap this thing up. Larry, thanks again. And as always, guys, until next time, we'll see you on the water. Okay. 